can catch me in the cherry red 150. Uh. Got the glizzy lock in the stizzy. Chip. Pop a glizzy doing 60 down a one. Was he drunk, pissy? Trying to cruise through the avenue while my people just popping bottles up in Sue. Rendezvous. Yep. Fuck that. Spun a UE, lost a hubcap. Was back in the shack. Came back in a what's, what's that? that? Straight from Paris. Checking Gabby's new baby carriage. Pally Alice. Auto burn. Cherry reddish. Fresh out the dealer. Got a tech for the squealers. We're invest for the killer. Nothing less cause it's realer in the big apple. Where it's quick to get your shit. Tackle enemies. Spit at you, best friend, kidnap you, trust no one. Got beef, bust, juggling, you don't need no one. Talking about that you owe them, I'ma go for Dodo. Scarface, what I'm a Nolo. Nolo. One deep, probably a solo. Duffing, he throwing bullets, it's hard. It's so hard. Ay, ay, ay. That yeah. verse is hard. That means he about that. How he did that? Listen, he was 500 pounds. Hey, listen, maybe more. I'm trying to live. Maybe more, but you know what? You got through it. You 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 you, yeah, you were bumping through, but you got through it. Yeah, and, I, and, I, I want to know how he did that, though. Well, listen. We got Liza Rios. I'm going to have to ask her. Star Rios on the Premium P Show. We miss us and those. Let's, Ow. let's get to it. It's going to be a good one. Let's get to it. Ow. Cheer. Come on, everybody, get set. Let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium P Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up. It's the Premium P Show. If you want to scoop in the low, down low. Listen to the show, cause Milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. Miss Lissa knows. It's the Premium Internet. Peach Show. It's with great pleasure to welcome my friends, or my friend, I haven't met you yet, but now we're, we're going to meet you and Internet's to meet you, Liza Rios Ow. and Star Rios. Hey. Welcome to the show. Hello. Yo, that sounded super professional, like super You're like burr. Better. No, yeah. no, I sounded like I was, I was fucking doing a Geico commercial. A- anyway, listen. I forgot where I was at. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Liza, good to see you. It's you know? good to see you. You're it's always here. great to see Liza. I love Miss yes, Liza. Love yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, it's 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 special to see. Honestly, it's special to see when someone who been through a journey. And then to see them flourish and mm-hmm. see them like continue to flourish and really just continue to keep their head high. Oh, you thank know? you. Right, right off the bat, let's go. Mm-hmm. Star Rios. Star Rios. Okay. <laughs> First born. First born. Okay. Oh, you how, <laughs> no! How did, how did how did you come up with is Star her real name? Is Star your real no, name? No, she, no, that's not. That's, okay, she has tell, a slave name. Tell me about this. I don't. She don't want to. I, I would not discuss a slave name. Okay, but um, she has a slave name. Okay, how long have you gone by Star? Um, since like I was like fifteen. So was it because you just did not like your name, or was it because the the block was like already embracing you as Star, so you decided to go as such? Um, a little bit of both. I really hated. Um, the name, my government name. Yeah, like I really never understood like why my parents named me it's a regular. Your father, your dad did, but yeah. well, my father I named agree, me a regular like. Baby was it Esmeralda? No, my, no. My, my 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 government name is Amanda. Okay, that's not oh, that that's bad. Nice. No, I was I thought it was <laughs> extra Latin, no, like I mean, Malikis. <laughs> nah, it was a pun um, named them. I agree to it. You know that's. But um yeah, so I was just like I really hated my name, and then um just in um. I say, like, freshman year of high school, I just, like, named myself Star. And, like, everyone always used to say, like, you have, like, you, you have like a superstar. Sticker. And I used to always wear star stickers on my face. Um, I had, like, these big star earrings. Like, I just was into, like, being, like, I don't Be- know. Being a star. Yeah. So Did just, you immediately embrace that, Miss Liza? Or were you like, no, your name is this. No, I named I, you. I, 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 I refer to her as Star in public, but in the house, I don't call right. her that. Right, right, of course. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. It's You're like, Amanda, so get, she's cool with that get the, the house, fuck over yeah, here. Yeah, but <laughs> in, in public, you know, I refer to her, you know, as her. Did you ever do music? Um, actually, um, <laughs> on February 7th, that just passed, I dropped my first uh, music video. Oh. It's like a little freestyle to, um... To ease B, who's that girl? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just wanted to do something fun, and it was like a good following because I just did um, Star Reels, a firstborn documentary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and who was that with? That was with uh, uh, Dante Luna and okay. Joseph Rivers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it I came see. Out in January. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, that, the, the that documentary that. came out and actually in December. Okay. Yeah, like December twenty seventh or some shit like that. Yeah, it's on YouTube and yeah, uh, it's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, you could just type in Star Reels, the firstborn documentary, and it'll come up. Yeah. And um, the music video is called Your Highness. Mm-hmm. And you're rapping. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of <laughs> Have you always wanted to rap and you are you just doing it just to um, promote Honestly, the- uh, I mean, growing up, I, I wrote, I, I sang and I rap, but it wasn't like my lane. Like, it wasn't something like, it wasn't my passion. Like, I wasn't like, I want to do this. Um, But 
like recently i was like what can i do to startle people because like you know so i was like i was trying to do something like that so that's why um i did the track and the i did it really for the feedback to see how people gonna react to it and the reaction was crazy yeah like people's like like they were dragging it though like you're up next this is what hip-hop need <laughs> yeah. i was just like no, no. <laughs> i was like, i'm not ready for this do it on your back <laughs> now, now were you were you worried because being big pun's daughter you of know course. um that people would be like you know She's judging you or just course. like because I mean, you know honestly the world is a different than when your pops was born mm-hmm. you know i mean well pops is moving and grooving well now yeah you know times is different now because we have like social media mm-hmm. and that's like the biggest platform right now like that's what people get praised and bullied you yeah, know yeah. so right so yeah of course um i already know i was gonna get judged like people's gonna judge me no matter what mm-hmm. but um honestly i got more greater i got more great feedback than negative right. like it was like 98 percent good nice like nice. yeah everyone was just um and of course i i wrote i wrote something and i felt like it wasn't good enough because i do feel like i have expectations to reach because i'm big pun's daughter i'm not like some regular average right. bitch from the bronx mm-hmm. like, talk about like, it I feel like I got you know I'm 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 a, I'm a daughter of a legend yeah. you know from you know from the Bronx like mm-hmm. first Latino rapper to ever go platinum was solo line rapper so I'm like I got Dimelo Dimelo you know I got a oh meet so, so my brother actually I, I had my brother to help me that's smart yeah because my brother Chris to Rivers. me he's the yeah Chris Rivers to me he's the best lyricist like in mm-hmm. that time right now so um yeah we but the thing is me and my brother has such a big disconnection because we're really different Mm -hmm. he's like i'm more like street like Mm -hmm. and hood and Mm -hmm. he and the lingo i I talk more hood sure most definitely and he's very um conservative he's very conservative conservative. reserve and he's like kind of like a nerd what's his name he's he's a he's a a, i'm a sagittarius Sagittarius. he's a scorpio Uh okay Okay. i'm a sagittarius you're a fire sign got you so when when (laughs) november what i'm december 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 17th okay yo when how old were you when pun passed I was nine. Nine. So what is some of your fondest memories? Because I remember uh, when we had Chris, when I spoke to Chris, and, and you know, he, he had some memories, but he was young. Right. You know, yeah, you, would, you, you being I the mean, first I'll born. I have the most memories since I'm the oldest. But um, What were some of your greatest? As the good ones. I know there's some bad ones, too. Um, <laughs> um, the greatest memories will have to just be... Um, will have to be, like, towards the end, like, as far as, like, towards when, like, his death... Mm-hmm. Um, we used to, um, live in a hotel and, um, my father really just loved the pool. Like, I think cause he felt light and he's like, he could just like <laughs> do handstands and like do shit he couldn't do. Like you like half your weight in the water. Yeah, exactly. I never knew that. I used to pick <laughs> yeah. people up and I was like, yeah, Oh and shit. He really lo- and just, I just remember him being so like nice and so like peaceful and like being in the pool and just chilling with us and just like, just being so like happy mm-hmm. and just that, that's simple moments like that. But I'm be honest. I don't have like I can't name like you know hundreds of moments yeah. because we have a crazy. I had a crazy childhood and upbringing, and I was the first child. So I, you know, the, when you're the first child, you get it like the worst, right? Because you're the oldest. You're like the trial and error. Like they're gonna, <laughs> they learn. Yeah, from and you. and, and you kind of like look out for the little ones, mm-hmm. and you kind of like just hold the most of the pain, the weight, right. everything. So yeah, so they don't feel it, you know. So you, we fucked up her life the most. Yeah. <laughs> now you know you know you know you know it's funny watching a documentary, <laughs> watching the, you know we're just watching it and um, you know. There's a part where you know you broke down and uh, you, mm-hmm. you almost that, uh, started to cry. It was a one second broke down that touched that, people Millions. talk about that one second, like, no, no, there's nothing wrong that with matter. that. I, it, no, it's that was just monumental. one second that I really touched people. It was just a second. Like, you started to think about your father and you mm-hmm. started to think about the moments, you know, that you know, just not really growing up with a father and stuff like that, not having him there and missing him, or not really just even getting that chance, you know. Got, Has that been tough for you to growing up with no dad? Forget about Big Pump for a second, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, because even when he was there, we didn't really do, like, the typical, like, you know, father-daughter thing, like, you know, we, we did, we did some shit, like, but it was, like, it wasn't normal, like, you know, he told me how to fight, and told me how to put, like, bullets in the gun, and, like, crazy <laughs> stuff, like, like, my father was, like, he was trying to, like, raise me but to be, they, like, a they, little they, gangster or some shit, like. They did lack the father, you, the, the fatherhood that, that you want from, you know, from Yeah, father. sure, like, sure. Like, going to the party. Go outside and play. And the quality time. And, and the quality time. Yeah. And, you know, you know like, nice stuff, talks like. and shit. Well, yeah, we'll bounce around throughout this whole episode of different things, mm. but Liza, you mentioned something one time about um, Y2K, how Big Pun was so scared Remember? about Y2K. Y2K when we in, uh, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, what, 2000. What did um, he do? What did he, he do? He actually had, had all... <laughs> 
My father, we was actually living in a cab base. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, you can't, like, you can't make shit up. My father had money, but we was living in the cab base. And, um, that was, that was a, that was a midsection because we was either recording in Sony studio like for a week at a time. Yep. And then we, when he got tired from that, we would shoot up to the hotel and White Plains. But if for every reason, for whatever reason, if the ride he felt that was going to be too long, that he wouldn't be able to make it to White Plains, we would end up in the <laughs> studio. And we would end up, I'm sorry, in the cab base, which was, yeah, right there on Westchester Avenue was right next to the old Riddlers. It was a cab base, so mm-hmm. we would end up there. You would and never think just, like a platinum recording artist no, would live in no, a cab base. No, people would never think that. He and his album was platinum at the time, and we sitting in the in the a bed like in the in the in the regular cab base with a bed, and then there's like a it was like a couple of stairs with another little landing, and they had their bed in there, mm-hmm. and then we had a um a protein a pro propane heater okay. that we could have died in there it's like yeah, that shit was, was like ridiculous. all day and night we freezing in there so yeah for the Y2K he was he thought that the world was gonna end and he had we the have, life he had the um the, we all had the he had the bulletproof vest so wait so the, all the kids had wore bulletproof vests we all had bulletproof vests on and we, we had my brother and my sister guns. wow he had and that guns shit was out. heavy we, mind you we was like, like I was like what 8, 9 yeah. like that shit is like Kind of heavy for a He had kid. them strapped on. They were sitting on the bed. My mom came. <laughs> my mom came to count the ball down, and she's all you know. She's just you know happy for, to bring the ball and the kids. What she say when she came up. in and she, seen... she she was she knew that was a norm. Yeah. She knew like that was but what, what it was. Me though, that this nigga once it hit twelve o'clock, like my you know like people like yeah. Mm-hmm. My yeah. father literally was like this. He was like, she and he was like this, quiet. looking at the door with the gun, <laughs> like some was, movie shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, we was real quiet, like this. Like he really thought people was and gonna then, come through the door and kill us. Yeah, like, and, and, <laughs> and when nothing happened, that's when my son, he was tired. He said, "That's it, nothing. That's it." He got tired. He went to sleep. But yeah, he was really paranoid. That's why the year after, when the towers actually went down, mm-hmm. that was something that I was happy that he was not able to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if Pun was present while that went down, yeah, he would have been out. straight locked. Down, we would have been straight locked down. We wouldn't have been able to come out the house because he was really excessively paranoid. Yeah, so I he, think that's where I get that a, shit we from. We wouldn't have been cause... able to come outside. What about conspiracy theories? What did he believe in those? Like, we didn't even get into all of that. We, like... Me and him, we didn't even get into all of that because of the type of relationship that yeah. you know, we didn't get to talk a lot about stuff that we should have. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know much about. I mean, he wasn't really much of a conspiracy theory. Well, how long just... were you guys together before you had Star? Um, well, I was with him at 14 and I had her at 17. You're a junior, isn't both of you junior high school sweethearts? Yeah. Not even high school sweethearts. Junior, junior high school, junior so high school I met sweethearts. I was 14. Yeah. I was 14, was 15. Um, I got pregnant with her at 17. I got married at 17. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, actually, there's a lot that happened before then. I remember, you know, you, uh, Got sent away from Pond. Wait, so you yeah. met Pond when you were in junior high school? Yes. Tell us even tell us about the the first date, how that went down. Um, the first date was after a few weeks after meeting him. Uh, my girlfriend hooked us up, like you know, to date, and it was on some slow talking, whatever. And then it was a, you know, one day I asked my mom if you know I could meet um this kid, and she said fine. And I jumped on the twenty seven bus and went down Soundview. Oh, Soundview. Last, <laughs> yeah, of course, Soundview. Went the last stop, got off the last stop, then we walked around the water and. Did all of that. Look at him being romantic. Yeah, I got water down there and everything. And then um, <laughs> we came back, you know, before curfew. And we ended up um, hanging out in front of the steps. And we ended up falling asleep on the on the stoop. And my mom came up like at 3 in the morning, found us sleeping outside. And then she brought us downstairs. And he actually spent the night the first time. Really? Yeah. But was, in different rooms. Yeah, of course. <laughs> different rooms. Now, 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 did he pull a move on you the first time? Uh, no, no. It wasn't. Just kissing? It was, yeah, it was just kissing. It was all new because I never did anything. It was... My first boyfriend, so everything was him was uh, a nice little journey, and and yeah, he was persistent here and there, and then it was it was really around the time like was for we we started dating in April, so and that November it was his birthday, so me trying to be the nice girlfriend, I say hey, you know I'm gonna give him yeah you're you know, gonna give, give him, him some because I remember you, I remember <laughs> I remember you saying that uh, you were gonna wait for a while, you wanted to wait till you were married yeah actually. I wanted to wait till married, but then I, I jumped the gun, I was fourteen, he was mm-hmm. fifteen, it was gonna be his birthday, so it was November fifth because his birthday is the tenth. Okay. So it was November 5th. I was going to give it to me even five days earlier. Mm, look at you. you know look at like, you. What? Like, <laughs> so that from there, it's like, um, yeah, we set it up. My mom, she was, you know, she was a single mom, and she would get up like at 4 in the morning and work at the, she used to work at the World Trade Center building. Okay. Uh, you know, like some cafes, I forgot the company, but she worked at the American Express building, and she would leave at the house by 6 in the morning, 5.30, she was out. So he's coming, he came to check me in the morning. 
and we tried to, but nothing really happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, you know, he was, he couldn't get up. It was mm-hmm. just, you know, awkward situation. We ended up taking a shower. Then I ended up writing him a letter. My mom found the letter the next day. That's when hell broke loose. And then my dad took me away for a year and a half, you know, to Long Island. Then when I left, his mom, um, he was upset that I left. And then he didn't want to sell no more drugs. So then his mom kicked him out. And then he ended up, uh, my mom ended up picking him up. Wait, so that's then, crazy. So yeah. I'm living in Long Island with my dad. And then he's living with my mom. Yeah, yeah. So then he, that's crazy. So your mother basically let him live in the house. Yeah, she felt bad. He was homeless in the street. So she opened the doors and wow. let him in the crib. And how old was he when this was? He was like 15. And he, well, was he was just turning 16. 16, okay. Birthday, yep, yep. He was just turning. Yeah, and he, and he missed out on the cake. He missed out on the cake, but at least he had a... A bed and a pillow to lay right. on. <laughs> and, and then you're in Long Island, and then you make your way back. How did you get back to... I made it back in a year, a year and a half later, you know, Damn. just doing good in school, not having no contact with him, you know, because I wasn't allowed to contact. My dad was recording the conversations in the house. Wow. So I was like, I couldn't even sneak a call or nothing like that. So once um I stood out of trouble for the year and a half, I was able to come back um to, long, um, to the Bronx. I was 16. Mm-hmm. Then my mom, you know, my mom and him, they kept in contact. Because he stood living with her for a while, but then he had to leave at some point. Mm-hmm. And then they stood in contact. And my mom used to work. Um, at, my dad had a security business, so okay. she would work for my dad. My mom would work for my dad, so my mom would hire um, Pun to clean the office. Okay, nice. So then they kept in touch and, you know, and, and built their own relationship. So after I came back from Long Island, my mom was pressing me to call him. And I waited for the whole summer because I didn't want to get into trouble. I didn't want you know, I wanted to stay focused. And I had to get a job and, you know, take care of myself and... And, you know, she kept pressing me the whole summer to call him. And the moment I did, you know, he came like two days later to visit me and we was inseparable. And then after that, then she was giving me a hard time that I was with him. And it's just a long story. <laughs> like now, now, like now you got to leave him or marry him. So it was like one or the other. Because I think my dad found out that she we was together. So then my dad kind of like, I guess, put the pressure on her. Right. saying my mom is not backtracking. Like, oh, you can't be with him, but it's already too late. Like, you already pushed me Like, the, you kind of hooked this yeah, up, Exactly, mom. you know what I'm saying? So, so you got to get married at a young age. When you got, at 17. When, you got married at 17. He was what, 18? 18. Okay. I had to get my parents to sign off for me. Wait, so oh, that's right. They had to sign yeah. off. How did you convince your dad? Um, I I didn't like um I I didn't even know if I knew I needed only one parent, I would only have my mom. <laughs> right. But then I I didn't know at the time, so I asked both my 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 parents, and I mean, it's at a point where they just felt like I was gonna do regardless. I was already out the house. Mm-hmm. I already moved out at seventeen. And after that, three months later, I asked. You know, he proposed, and I asked for the signature. So it was it was a done deal. And this so is before this is this is before Pum was even rapping. Yeah, this is he was just hustling in the streets. No, he wasn't hustling. I mean, he was hustling before mom was then. Getting some jobs. He was hustling before then when we first started dating. He was on the cozy corner, and Salve, He was hustling, mm-hmm. and then at some point, you know, when I when I came back from Long Island, he wasn't hustling because that was my thing. Like, I didn't want him hustling while I was with him. Right. You know what I'm saying, and then from there, he was when I came back from Long Island, he was supposed to go to Florida with his grandmother. But then he decided to stay because he wanted to stay with me. Mm-hmm. So then he had an opportunity to go to Florida and do the boxing and everything. But he stood behind. But then he was homeless. But I didn't know that. So mm-hmm. he was homeless, bouncing around, you know, friends, washing his ass in a pump, having his ha- um his clothes stashed in a building, in an abandoned building. So once I found out that he was homeless, then I, I was working a McDonald's job. So I took my bullshit, you know, my check. And with my mom, me and my mom, we went and got him a, a, a room in, home, in um, Hunts Point. Okay, nice. So we got him a furniture room in Hunts Point. I paid a few weeks, whatever, front. Then he was bumping trucks, you know, at Hunts Point, you know, for money. You know, they bump trucks on and off for money. Then one day he was really broke, and he ended up calling his family lawyer, Mr. Gersock. And that's when the lawyer was like, oh, my God, I've been looking for you. Oh, that's he right. He, that case. He, he had a case. The what, case what happened was, to him? The case was when he was like five, six years, 45 years old. Uh, it was a building. Uh, I believe it was Clint, Clinton Towers and Matt. And then, um, That's not had, my house on like 54th? There was a big building. It was Clinton Towers, I believe. Yeah. And they had like do, doing construction and they didn't have no, no barricade, no kind of. And he was a kid and he climbed up like two, three stories high. Wow. And then he fell down. And when he fell, he landed on his cheekbone, um, smashing his cheekbone. And then when his foot landed, his foot landed and the impact, it snapped his ankle off. Oh my so his, God. So it was still connected with the skin, but the ankle bone was totally detached. Oh my God. So then they had to have a, a, a doctor from India come. India. And then they had to Not take. A, a bone from here because she was the best at the time, I guess, because they had to reconstruct his whole knee. How old was Pun to, when that happened? He was six, four. Oh, my four. goodness. So they had to reconstruct and put wires and metals and then, like, take a bone from here.
here and fix here his cheekbone. And then his mom put a lawsuit in, and thank God they never settled until he was eighteen. Like they kept that there, right? So, and, so then later on he finds so out he that won, how he much got half a million dollars God, um, tax wow. free. So then the 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 payment was a hundred thousand dollars. He gave you back your room, your room money. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was eight it was a hundred thousand dollars up front, okay. and then it was eighteen hundred annuity for ten years. Okay, okay. okay. And then in the year two thousand, it was another a hundred thousand. Okay. But that hundred thousand went like that first. Matt, you give a kid right. What, what did he buy? What did he hood. buy? I mean, we looked like two drug dealers. Like we had like rope chains. We had name rings. Hell figure. We looked twins. Chinchillas. Like the, 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 you know, the, the whatever coat bus back then with the big hood. I don't know, Nordicas, whatever. Okay, Nordicas. Right. Then. Polo. Whatever coat it was back then. And, you know, we had the Nordicas and the Gap and, you know, and, um, yeah, he just spent a lot of money bullshit. Like he cleared some debt in the street and, right. you know, from his mom, you know, pay your lawyer, stuff like that. What's up with uh, Pun and his mom? I mean, I know there's so much we'll get into sideways mm-hmm. stuff, like meaning like, you know, a lot of his demons right. were from mom. Right. You know, wh- wh- why did they never get along? She, I know she, she, how did she, what did she exactly well, do to well, him? Well, the the issue with the mom was that um, his upbringing, she was, uh, she was, she was using. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what to follow on she was using. And then she, uh, the man that she married after his dad. Uh, abused him and he was also using he was an old vet and and um so it, he he was physically abused mentally and physically abused yeah. so, so the guy used suffered. to hit hit pun yeah the, the stepdad used to abuse it used to abuse pun so then growing up i think i remember me seeing them together their relation was a, a pure volatile relation it was a hate love relation he loved his mom but there was a lot of hate a lot of resentment um he will come at her for his past you know you know like a child comes to your parent like you hurt me you yeah. know you've done this to me and she would never admit she would never drop the ball and say you know what? i fucked up mm. i did this to you so he was looking for that and he never and got never, it he never I, got I remember it. you saying that she uh... got she gave she gave the right response that he probably would want to hear after interview after his passing and someone asked so like what would you say if Pun was here yeah. and her response was, and when I heard I was like that's, what that's he exactly needed. what he needed to hear for that healing you know all parents do it like my kids all came at me like gunning you know what I'm saying and and, and at the time I had and, and as much as it hurts but it's that pill you gotta swallow say so you know what I fucked up yeah. Yeah. I fucked up I fucked you know I, I messed up you know what I'm saying I dropped the ball and you gotta and there's no excuse it's like I take ownership like I messed up you know what I'm saying? And it takes time after they get older to understand where... Because, you know, it's, it's hard. Like, I, I never really realized how serious it is to have a kid. Like, I'm 17, I'm have a kid. I'm I'm I, I'm a kid having a kid. Right. Yeah. And as you try to figure out life and you go through depression, you're trying to figure out life and figure things out, you're fucking up your kid's life. And yeah. it's not intentionally. It's just... Yeah. That's you're, how shit is. Because you're trying to figure yeah, out... Yeah, you're trying to figure out. And then you, I'm neglecting them. I'm not, you know... I'm looking for love in the wrong place. I'm, they, being, they were already neglected... When Pun was alive, and then is even still being neglected afterwards. Me going through the depression of the abuse and right. trying to figure things out, and and you know, so it's, it's a lot going on. You know what I, I remember, so, I remember you saying that, um, you know, Pun died with a broken heart. Yeah, because he and it was his mother's love he wanted. Yeah, and and, and my relationship, yeah. my relationship with him mimicked the same relationship and with suffered mom. and suffered and he, because yeah, of what it. What he what he witnessed his mom go through. Yeah, he and I would say, you look at a man and look look at a man. You want to see how a man treats a woman? Look at the relationship between his mother and him. I would mm. say that. Mm. Look at the relationship between them, and a lot of times it, it, it's gonna it's eye opening. Yeah, and our, my relationship was the same like hers. It was, it was a love hate, and I think he just had a lot of resentment, a lot of anger, and like he never had. Like, uh, he didn't grow up with, like, uh, mother, a, like yeah. a, a mother figure, mm. a woman figure, mm. someone that he loved and would respect and honor. So, yeah, he was, it was... That had to be tough. And I, I'll tell you one thing, too, you know, um, before you got married, I remember right. you saying that, um, you know, y'all had some altercations and you went to the uh, wedding. You got married at what? City Hall, right? Yeah. And you went to the City Hall and you had a black eye. No, what I did was I, I had the black eye when I went to get the marriage license. Oh, okay. Marriage That's license. Was, so, yeah. So, going there with a black eye, I'm like, something, something's, something's not right. Something's not right, but, yeah. You know, I was young. I was 17. You know, it wasn't a situation. I, I was already pregnant. It wasn't something that I felt like I could even go back home. So, and it was someone that I loved. So, it was something, and then someone that promised that it would never happen again and you believe it. So, you just lay in your bed. How what was it like to... the first time it happened? Like what? What was what was the shift in the love hate? Like where did it go from love to the hate? It was really like, um, well, the situation. The first time he ever got physical was over an argument when um, when I first got back from Long Island, and he was asking me about a boy that I kissed in Long Island in school. 
So he was kept asking me, and, and I was honest. You know How did he so, know about that? It was no Snapchat or Instagram. It wasn't, but because he asked me, so I was honest. Oh, I, my 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 yeah. flaw is that I'm honest. Mm -hmm. So you know, so basically, I was honest, like yo, this is boy. You know, I'm being sarcastic. Yo, but, honestly, honestly, sometimes I say honesty is the best policy, but sometimes what people don't know won't hurt them. But I respect but people that, like but you too. For me, that I was, I I can't. That's no, no, I am. It's like if you're not tough enough to take the truth, then that's your problem. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So. So for me, I was letting him know, and um, he had a problem with it. And I remember him pushing me once the first time, like against the the school right. the school gate, and then he was upset and he left me, and I'm like screaming behind him, like oh my god, like you know, all dramatic and stuff. Right. I think back always that time. What if I would have flipped it another way? You know, what things would have been, or what if I was that chick was a crazy chick? Like the minute he hit me, me come out. Like the, then the first time that he really hit me was that time when we broke up for a short time in junior in high school. Right. Right. And that in that short time, I had I had Chinese food. I had a Chinese food um um dinner with a kid up the block. And we bought Chinese food, and this we ended up, eat, eat. we ended up we ended up eating upstairs in my in my apartment with my when my mom and my aunt was there. So it was nothing crazy, nothing nothing happened. We finished Chinese. He went back home. Somehow he knew about it. I don't even know how. I just know months later we're living in my own apartment. He calls me. He's like, "Yo, come down the block. Come to the end of the block." So I'm like, "Okay." So I come down in the block, and who is he standing with? The kid I ate Chinese food with. What? what? I'm like, "How the fuck is?" I'm like, what? "Why is he standing <laughs> with this kid?" So he's like, "Oh, you had Chinese food," and he was, and I was shocked. The kid was like scared and yeah. shocked standing there too. You know what I'm saying? And then you know we he has some words, and I just know he gets back. So I'm like, "Pra!" In the middle of the street. And then, but after that, you know, I went home, hysterical crying and stressed out. But then after that, it's like, you know, it's, you know, he, he apologizes, apologizes, you know, beg, um, begs for, for forgiveness. They always cry. Swear that they're never going to do it again. So mm -hmm. that, you know, and it's a series. And after a while, you believe it because it's never happened to me before. I Love never experienced that. I don't even know what domestic violence was. I right. never seen it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know where it comes from. You know, so I believed it. And that, and, and there's a series. They do that for a while. Like, I'm sorry, sorry. Then from a sorry, it's like, you're making me do right. this. Why are you making me do this? It's like, oh, you must want to get hit. This is what you're, then, then after that, I was like, you're my slave and this is how it is. Damn. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a progression that goes. But he was cool with your mom. So even though he didn't have his mother, he had yours. How does she feel about this? Or did she try to help him? Or did No, he I mean, she, the, how my mom feels about the abuse I know after the death she felt guilty that she never approached him about it and never said right. anything my my family never spoke on it like I hid it for many years and then when it was exposed they didn't approach him about it they didn't speak about it and the relationship with my mom and him was alright but as he got older it wasn't as close you know what I'm saying right. like on his school years you know what I'm saying like and um you know, it wasn't as close as like you know. It was like he had this love and respect for my mom that he was gonna treat me any better. Right. That didn't matter. Well, especially to the fame and the money, I'm sure it just took over of like you know and his style and how he was moving. I mean, yeah, it did get to his head a little bit. He did get a little more sometimes impossible deal, but I don't know. It, it, you know, I think with combination with the fame, but more so like um, everything that he was dealing with in his life, aside from the fame, like carrying that weight, six hundred pounds, that shit is. Yeah. Well, he didn't, oh, he, he wasn't big always, right? No, I, I met him. He was like two fifteen, rock solid. Okay. I, I seen a picture on Boxing. your Instagram. Yeah. Um, which is pun is her, right? Yeah. Pun is her, and uh, I seen him on like on a beach chair. You know that picture of uh, yes, me and him and on him, the beach chair. Yo, yo, I was pregnant with her. <laughs> Homeboy looked like 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 a, like a kilo dealer from Colombia. And he was gaining weight right then. Mm -hmm. That's when we first moved to Florida. We just first got married. Mm -hmm. You know, he was eating good. I was cooking a lot, and he just started gaining weight there. Mm -hmm. So, but um, yeah, and it just progressively, you know. But before even that, when um, you had Star, mm -hmm. right, at seventeen, yeah. So basically, when you got married the next month, you were pregnant, huh? Um, I got pregnant in February when I first I first started having sex in January, and then mm -hmm. I tried to got the con contraceptives, and you know they said uh, the t the doctor bed then said use it for two weeks, mm -hmm. and I literally used it for two and a half weeks. But back then the birth control was you really had to use it for two three months. Right. Back then it's not like today's birth control. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was good two and a half weeks. So when that's when we did the whole back of the bleachers situation. Now, <laughs> now th that's where Star was conceived in yeah, where? In, in, in Monroe High School in the back of the as bleachers. As you stared at the stars. <laughs> exactly. As now, now at she, the stars. Well, she was conceived there because y'all didn't have really I mean, yeah, hotels. at the time we didn't have a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? We had money. We didn't have money. When we did, we go to hotels and that was the time that we didn't have money. 
it was nice outside. We was like, you know what? We laid down these nice <laughs> puffy coats down and <laughs> went, did the business. and Get the business going. And then like a month later is when I was feeling a lot of pain. And I went Damn. to the doctor and realized I was pregnant. Star, so, now, now you have a son, right? <laughs> you didn't have him in the bleaches, right? You didn't conceive no. him. Okay. <laughs> now, let me ask you something. One thing I love that I saw in the documentary is you – Wearing your pop's clothes, arguing with mom. Mom is like, "Leave the goddamn clothes alone. This yeah. is my husband's clothes." You saying, "This is my father's clothes. Right. I want them." And I looked at them and I said, "Some of them were real dope. That one, that denim one with the map." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Damn, these these things are humongous. What size were those things, man?" Um, they well, they're the actually the map one I wear. I had her like make it smaller, and it's still huge. Like it's like over six X. It's really, really yeah. Big. It was because like I wear them as like big dresses, or, right? Like, I wear a lot of skirts, so I, like they tucked in. So it was like it's just like the arms is big, but it's like I just like the style. So they were custom made. Yeah, yeah, they were custom made. Who do you used to go? Did he used to um, go to Troy somebody? from Five Thousand and One Flavors did all his clothes. Okay, Troy. Because it got to a point where he was already passing the six X, and um, big and tall only goes up to six X, and the pants, and the you know, weren't fashionable really either. Yeah, they weren't that yeah. fashionable, but <laughs> even still, like just regular T-shirts, it was like impossible. I had to stretch them and go through all these changes, so. It came to a point that I gave Troy, like, yo, here's $5,000 to get him, like, regular clothes. So he made him, like, open shirts and, like, pants with the drawstrings. Because now it's hard for him to wear belts. Because mm. he got the belt and the belt. And then, it's, you know, take off. Just... Now, now you still I mean, have it's... a lot of his clothes? Yeah. 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 And, you, and you wear them now, right? You yeah. try to change them up and do I some wear, different stuff? I wear, like, the shirts. Like, mm-hmm. I don't wear the pants. <laughs> 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 Them shits must be like 39-gallon bags. Uh, I know I'm big, but that's dragging. Yeah, um, dude. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wear the shirts e- even, even to this day. Like, because at first I started wearing um, his his um, clothes because, like, I was a time, like, I really couldn't really afford to buy a lot of clothes. And But now that I could afford to buy basically whatever I need, like, I still wear his clothes because I like it for the style Sure, sense. sure. And plus, that's your father. And, and, you know, regardless of everything, you know what? And I, I learned to let it go. I learned but to in the beginning, I, I really worried because, like, I had, like, no choice. I yeah. felt, like... Really, like, I was just wearing his clothes because it was cool and, like, I had no choice. But now that I have a choice, like, I still would wear his shit. Like, today I was going to actually wear one of his shirts, but I was like... That would have been dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. I was, right? was going to wear it, but, yeah, actually, like, yeah. I forgot why I didn't wear it. Yeah. You, know, you know, one thing I like about you, Star, is that, uh, you know, throughout the documentary and what I learned about you, but besides that, you know, okay, so you're Big Pun's daughter, you know, but you still got a lot of other things to do. You know, like, people could be somebody, but you still got to move and groove. Exactly. People, you know? People always have, like, assume, like, oh, she's rich. Yeah, she's yeah. Well, people, daughter, social media not, can, yeah, you know. Yeah, social media is, like. Can consume anything. I mean, I also feel like people feel like you should be rich. Like That's we, a fact. They, I feel we, like that. They feel like <laughs> the music is still moving. The the we don't know the deal, and I know that you did have like a, a lawsuit and the, like you settled. But people feel like because he is so mm-hmm. ill yeah. and his music is still credible and it's still dope that you should be rich. Exactly. So we rich. people don't really know like the ins and outs and like the shit we've been going through. Right. You know, with the. Well, the people who've been following know that, you know, you had lawsuits and, and issues for many years about lawsuit, trying... Lawsuit, not lawsuits. Okay, yeah. lawsuit. Yeah. But <laughs> also issues trying to get back money or royalties or right. whatever it was. You know, and one thing I don't like about the internet is some people may not know, like, I've seen a lot of people try to drag you a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I don't I've like that shit. You know yeah. why? Because I'm explaining to you. Some people who may not know the full situation... A lot of people would say, yo, that's not cool about with Fat Joe. Like, she got to go get her own job. Okay, granted. What? No, no, no. People don't know. People don't even know situations. People may not know what you are what you need or what you should get. Like, if, if Pun made money with somebody, why why are his kids? Why is not the estate that, that, liable that, for that? that? It's, it's upsetting because, like, the media makes it seem like we're acting for something that wasn't, it's like, entirely exactly. us. Like, we're but, acting for him to take care of us. No, we're acting what was old to And us. that's the one thing that I hate because everybody always say, oh, why don't Fadjo take care of you? Oh, Fadjo. And I always say... I don't want him to take care of me. I'm not asking for anyone to take care of me. It's what's right well, for the hours. Sure. Yeah. That's and, it. It's simple. Now, now, you know, it's funny because I, I know that you settled the lawsuit and, um, you know, you were going back and forth and back and forth and mm-hmm. back and forth. But one thing is funny. I remember seeing something and somebody was asking him about it. You know, it's been back and forth of you, you know, telling your side, him t- him telling you that you know, he gave you a million dollars and you blew through it. <laughs> but check this out. I remember watching something where Joe said... Um, she got a lawsuit, but she ain't gonna win. There's no way. Mm-hmm. And you yeah, won. I heard that too. Yeah. But you won. Exactly. What? Why'd you win? Because uh, I, I, I had, I was in my right to win. A lot of people think, uh, you know, um, 
a lot of people think that I've been paid before and I got this and I could just you can't go to you can't put a lawsuit in a federal case off of bitching and complaining right. like oh you know I feel like this person owes me and no that doesn't the case because there's hardcore proof evidence that there was money missing I mean you had the um we had a financial advisor mm-hmm. you know that goes through the auditing and they ordered everything and there was over two million dollars that they found that we never gotten did Pun you know sign a bad deal. <clears throat> Um, Pun, Pun, when he had a, when he signed the deal, he didn't even have a lawyer when he signed the deal. And when he signed the deal, um, I found out through the process of the discovery, because through the discovery lawsuit, I had Sony and everybody give me paperwork. Mm-hmm. And I found out through the deal, he had a $250,000 deal. Let's put it this way. I'm going to just tell you this one little story. It's a $250,000 deal he had, right? This is not with Loud Records, right? This is with Loud Records. Okay. It's a $250,000 deal he got when he signed to Loud Records. And the advance to that was $50,000. And half of that goes to Joe and Pun. That's how they split it, right? Mm-hmm. So then, and I remember the time Pun was so excited. He got his little money, whatever. And at the time, Joe was having some tax financial situation with the FJ560 store. And Pun, out of his 25000 25, he got, he came and gave Joe 8000 Like, yo, hold this, take that, you know, to help you pay for the taxes. During the lawsuit of getting the discovery from Sony, I found out that the advance was really 75000 mm. It was never 50000 so it was really 75000 So <laughs> that just goes to show you from day one, it was never right. Yeah. The minute he signed, it was never right from there on. You, you so know, from there, it was just 17 years of me trying to get what was due and then me not knowing exactly how to get it done and how to do it. Right. So, but, but I finally, mean, I know it went back there. and forth, you know, and, and uh, you know, just to get the facts out there, too. When 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 he says that they did an album and give you, I think, like a million dollars, right? Yeah. Did I that ever happen? No. When they, the, the last money I've gotten was for Endangered Species. Okay. The Endangered Species, I I saw an interview that he said I gave out hundreds and hundreds. When you count, it sounds like $1.6 million or something. But it, but all I got was one hundred and twenty five thousand for total this piece. forever. Total. I was supposed to get one fi- hundred and fifty. To be honest, I was supposed to get one fifty. But the last check of the twenty five thousand check was stolen from Sony, Damn. and I actually went to court and testified for them, stating that that check was supposed to be mine, and they never gave that back to me. So I totally got one hundred and twenty five for Endangered Species. No back money, no royalty. The Legacy album that they put out in two thousand nine, Pun didn't get a dime. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the, the the documentary that is the soundtrack to my documentary, I didn't get a dime for that documentary either. They got it was put out, and so there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that there's a lot of side artist money. There's things a lot, and then the people talk, but they don't know how the music business is. Right? Because you got the publishing, then you got money from the master side from Sony, then you got side artists. Side artists is any music, any any collaborations that Pun did. He never get any. He yeah. still hasn't got paid for none of that stuff. So there's money that's due, that's owed there that I would have to now see and try so you, to collect. So you tried, so this lawsuit was you trying to just put everything together. This lawsuit was against Joe and Jelly Bean or for the publishing. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. So is there any other things so you're trying to claim? Done, it's already a done deal. It's done. Um, we already settled. I can't really go into details of, of it, but um, I'm in the position that I need to be in. I'm happy. I'm, did I'm anyone happy. in the industry help you or did you, like, who was there for you? During the industry, no, no after one. After he passed away, no one. No one's ever. No, uh, Cuban no, links. No, about Remy. No, no one's. No one was ever there for me. I I remember doing an event one time, and I know um DMX came through for me. Right. And you know he got, had a lot of love, but he also got the call not to not to help or whatever. But I never had anyone help me to get this situation as far as getting his words of what he owed to put me in the right direction yeah. or anything. Like it was just all on me. And um and and what's kind of funny for me is like I I'm, I mean I'm I'm weird the only I mean the whole industry I just feel weird with the whole industry thing it was something that I was a part of because I was with my husband every day and I seen mm-hmm. <clears throat> but everything since his passing everything just went from left it, it just went drastically right. switched they love you when they that love you and feel, then they're not there I don't feel a part of this industry like I'm only connected because my husband's connected but like when you hear people speak of the love of they have for my husband you gotta really think Timeless. like what kind of love really is because the loyalty it didn't lie with him there was no one stood up for him at all and it wasn't for me it was for him so, I, I'm not even thinking about you standing up for me I'm thinking about you standing up for you for yeah. fun, that it's supposed to be your friend exactly so like, no one stood up for him your so twin. that's kind of like bugged out for me so like, so when you when you I remember you coming out and saying that you were in a shelter and that you, you know, uh, Fat Joe didn't give any money and all this other stuff no one no one ever tried to come and help out when they heard no, that all over no no one's ever 
No one's ever. The only person that ever reached out in their pocket and gave me anything was Little Kim for the funeral. At the funeral, she came and she gave me a thousand dollar check. Really? She gave me a check, and and I don't. And I heard through the. I heard here and there that there was someone collecting, and there was a collection. The funeral. I don't know if that's true because I never received anything. If there's ever been a collection, I'm gonna put it out there. If there's ever been a collection on our behalf during the funeral after. And any time, I've never gotten that either, if there was any, because I hear things and I don't right. know what's true. But, no, it was, it's, it's, it's crazy. So it's, it's a crazy situation. Yeah, you, you, know, you know what's crazy about this whole situation is that, um, you know, people, again, going back, people will judge. And, and, and you know, I should and, say, yeah, how, how, dare, how dare you want to get money they, that they, he deserved? They, they judge me. Look, granted, I should have never went to the shelter. You know what I'm saying? There was a million and one things I could have did to avoid that. You know what I'm saying? I I, I, I I accept that. I take accountable for that. I'm not blaming anybody that was in shelter because of that. <coughs> well, you know what I'm saying? But, but like, at the same time, like, but at the same time, if that was never taken away, it would have made my life right. easier. Because at the same time, I was dealing, my life was so consumed with Pun trying to fight for, for what was his. I, I lost sight of everything. Now, and then dealing with depression, I wasn't having time to mourn the death. Right. Dealing with that. Then it was a, a straight depression where I felt like I was losing everything, and I did lose everything. I lost everything. Right. Where we had to go into the shelter living for two years, homeless for two years. Damn. What were you saying, Star? I forgot. I, I you were saying who was... Uh, you were saying, because she was saying um, is that it's well, it not her fault, and then you were saying what, what aggravates you is... Because I was saying how was not, you know, I, I take accountability for me being in the shelter. I know, I'm I trying, I, know I remember we'll be so much like that for God, though. How do you feel about Joe, and how do the kids feel about him? Um, I mean, I don't really care for him, honestly. Like, I, I like, for years, like, I, like, me being, like, a, like, I personally don't like people who, like, bash my mother. Like, right. I don't give a fuck who you are, my nigga. Like, you, like, you're... Like, I don't respect a nigga like that because you're you made up lies. Like, you know, you didn't give us a million dollars, you know, you didn't give us Benjamin's, you know, you was lying on us. And like, the media, like, they're gonna always believe the person who has more of the power because mm-hmm. they're just they just not that's that's how I don't that's how I don't well, watch they TV. Be, yeah, they people believe people and who the people, are people glittering. believe the person who's in the more of the power, most right. definitely. And, and if, you, got, if yeah. you if you had a beef with someone that was like o- Obama, niggas gonna believe Obama over you, yeah, right. most you, definitely. You could be telling the truth, niggas ain't gonna believe you though because he has way more power than you. He has the masses on his side. But but you know it's funny it's like you know and and obviously the, the relationship is damaged. You know, you just oh, can yeah, never. You know, he, he's ne- he's never coming to more your sixtieth birthday party. Yeah. Uh, wisely, yeah, you know that. I, I seen Joe but, like in the club, like not too long ago. Like, what happened? Did he come say hello? Well? I mean, he was he was staring me down. Like he was staring me. I was actually where um I don't know if you know Loopy the blogger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was a, it was a time like he was taking me everywhere with him like for a whole week. We just going to Mac like hosting Mac events and shit. And um, I saw him at I think it was City Scapes in Queens. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, Joe was there and um I was just I was just like in the car just smoking a blunt and he just And hey, you he know what bugs me? He he was he was right like right here, like right. staring at me but I had shades on and like I could tell he was like he was staring me down, like I don't know if he wants to talk to me but scared to approach me type shit. If and, he would have approached you, how would you have handled that? Well, me, I'm not like my, I'm not like reserved like my brother. Right. Like I'm not like I really don't care. So like I'm really gonna say shit. He probably not gonna hear. Like I'm really like I'm really like I'm gonna say the truth. Like type shit. So yeah. I and mean, you know what was crazy too? Because then also the public. Them not knowing shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he gave you a salon. They they go for word like hard about it. Oh, he gave you a million dollars. Yeah, he like gave you salon. But- like I never even got this shit. And then <laughs> and then and then then oh get a fucking job, get a job. Like oh like so all right. Even if I had twenty jobs, I'm not supposed to fight for what's my exactly. What, what's to my even husband. She, even she was who even- in their right mind is not gonna be owed x amount of dollars? I'm not fighting four hundred dollars. Like who in the right mind is not right, gonna it's fight like for a what's big theirs? Amount of money. Let me, let that shit don't make no sense. When when Pun started making money, you know, and um, did he ever think about writing a will? No, he didn't. Literally, I stressed him about getting a will. Mm -hmm. And that's not even the thing of the will. I stressed about getting a will. He went and had his lawyer up there, and he said, give her everything. It's not even about the will, because me not having a will didn't really affect anything, because I'm legally his wife, and I'm also the administrator to the estate. Mm. So in the eyes of New York State, I am big pun. Mm -hmm. So that that should not have been anything of any problem of me getting his money. Right. It had nothing to do with the will. No, no, no. Why do you think... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pete, but why do you think... Um, they were holding your money. Like, why didn't Joe want to give it to you? Like, I just feel like, in my mind, I just feel like he 
he came, they, they were so close to see the kids grow up, to see all these really? things, and then for him to pass away. Like, why was he fighting you? Like, why was he being so stubborn about just giving it to you? Like, because is he when selfish? my father was alive, he was a selfish person. Like, he had my father, like, writing all his music, and write, my father writing his own music, and, like, he's not giving my father any even money for writing his own albums. Like, my father wrote his album and wrote all of Joe's albums. Don right. Carter, he gave him the name Don Cartagena, all that. He didn't pay my father for nothing. He was using him from the day one one from when he was alive so and that's what niggas don't know dude, niggas think that like Fadjo really cared about my dad he didn't, didn't care about him care. he was he was using him because he yeah. knew and that the father was a ticket that's all the facade it's yeah not, let, me, let me tell you something Pun one day we were all standing and Pun said if ever he told us if it ever got down and went and it ever got down just remember it's us and them we mm. always knew that it was us and them you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, we wasn't, is that it, really your it's man? It's not really a family. family. Day, if like me, like I'm a, I'm a, and you cannot go not, and say you love him on his birthday and, you got his, and the anniversary. I love you. You my hero. And you never be out to you, us. You, like, not even reach out to you. Ain't do right by him. Exactly. Yo, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what confuses right, so that me. shit kills me. Like, I don't understand. Like, that's real. Yo, like, I, I seen, I'm not one for real fake love. I seen, I seen you repost. And then you used my picture. You Why used my I picture seen, that I took I seen when you, I was a teenager with him. I seen you repost. Yes. I mean, repost the picture that Fat Joe yeah. posted on Instagram when it was Pun's birthday recently. It was his anniversary. And and you and and you, it was just hit. What did you write? You wrote I've been, I've been this. What makes quiet me for crack up? Huh? What did you write? You wrote this makes me laugh or something? No, I I don't know. I deleted it, but it was something like it's it's but so much you could tolerate, right? Because I got my hero. It's not like when it comes to his anniversary and it comes to you know his birthday, he want to play the act because not everybody knows the truth, right? And a lot of there's a lot of new fans that don't know half the shit that's going on. So you want to play the act like you still really, but in reality, you we know that you didn't give two shits about him. What really also <laughs> confuses me too is the fact that your son is so talented, like flow, lyricality, everything, and he didn't put him on. So that's when I started being like, well, hey, like, if he really, like, messed with them, how come he wouldn't take that's the... That's a blessing. We didn't and want push the to, legacy. We didn't want anything. We didn't want... With my son, I didn't want no, none of them none of them touching my kids. As right. far as, like, yeah. you know, professional music, I, like, I'm good with that. Like, they good. We don't even need him for that. Yeah, you know he's going to start but your own. It's just, it's just sad because I, when I think about Pun and everything that he put in and everything that he worked for right. and with love and heart, is like everything just... It, 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 the way went, after he died, everything fell apart. Because if, if I think if Joe would have played his cards a different way, it would have he would have had like the, he would have had something big like a live Rock Nation right now, like a Rock Nation. Yeah. That's a fact. He, would have, he had he had uh, Cuban Link, he had Prospect, Triple Says, um, Remy Martin, and um, Tony Sunshine. Everybody was like, and then being bro, crazy, everybody so loved it everybody crazy. loved Terror Squad, man. Let me it tell you something. Been crazy. Even more so. How has I mean obviously hip hop loves Big Pun. Mm. Seventeen years later, I mean forever. Yeah, Pun is is up there with the greats. I mean, people yes. forever, forever classic. But how has the Latin community treated you for that? Like, right? because I feel oh, like there was such they a they treat me like a queen. Like yeah. they put me up in the pedestal. Like it's like, please, please, no more, no more. Yeah, let me but tell you something. They, I always, I always admired puns. Latin community ties. Like I how mean, much to they're... see to see people tie in his face and his name and. It's, it's crazy, but they they got so much love for that man. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, still to this day, yeah, and that's why you know e- even you know you're doing a, a lot of the um, the merch now. You have the, yes. the pun t shirts. Where could they find uh, that? Big at? pun place. Um, big pun place. Pl. Okay. Big pun pl dot com, and you got the star Rio. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> um, I sold the glasses, but recently I started selling um capital punishment hats. So okay. I got snap caps. I got. Dad hats, Dad hats and Scullies, and you That's do dope. and you do the uh, sunglasses. I love like you got all flavors, yeah. and 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 you, you just became what I like to see is that you're becoming like a young entrepreneur, right. you know. And in, in, in this day and age, it's not about one thing. It's not right. about you know taking. That's what I like because okay, you're trying out you know spitting a couple of bars here and there, but you're not you know, ain't nobody can just gonna put you in that box. You know, you're starting exactly. the sunglass lane. Yeah. What else That's, do you got going on? Um, you got the documentary going I mean, on. I mean, I mean, I started off with the uh, with the with the with Star View, which mm-hmm. was the glasses, which I named it Star View because it's my name is Star and this is my view. Mm-hmm. And I picked that name because I was like, this we that's an easy name to expand. It's not like sunglasses or something. Right. So it's Star View. So whatever I put out there, you know, this is my view of it. So um, I started with the glasses because. You know, um, I always used to wear glasses. People used to always compliment me. Where did you get your glasses? So I was like, one day I just woke up like, let me just start selling glasses. She one day spent a whole literally like nine to five. Just like, and, I um, can't do this nine to five no more. And then um, <laughs> I actually, I was really depressed. Um, having a son, I thought that was gonna be. Well, that's like, right. You had, your son is six years old, right? Yeah, my son is six. I had him at um, I was 
like three weeks before my twentieth birthday, so okay. I was technically nineteen. Is, did you did you plan that or just happened? No, I didn't plan it. <laughs> now his name is Ether. Yeah. Okay. I, Please tell me why, because your mother told me that the cat is named Ilmatic. Yeah, my your son's <laughs> name is Ether. Yeah. Is this a Nas stand? Yeah, Star I really Rios? love. Um, since I was a little girl, I love Nas. Um, I just love like his mind, his rapping, physically. Like, I just love him. Um, so I like like growing like I was a little kid, like twelve years old, like listening to Ether, the song, like yeah. the the the, the Jay Z diss, and back then, like I was like. I love that song so yeah. much. So I was like, have, this is the best If you have ever. another kid, you should name the other kid Takeover. So you know? I was just like, yo, I was like, I already know my first kid's going to be a boy. I already knew that. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to name him Ether because that name is like, I always knew, like, I don't want to name my child like my parents did to me, like some regular ass name. I don't want my name to like have a baby book name because I'm like, my, my kids going to be different. So their name's going to be different. So... I was like, I never heard no one named Ether, yeah. so yeah. I just yeah. ran with it. Hey, listen, we live in a day and age where kids, you yeah, know, this, yeah, they this could be worse. Yeah, they could be not, worse. <laughs> and you'd be surprised. People, they double check. They'd be like, Ether? Is yeah. Name? They, or people they ask us, like, like Ethan, do you know what Ether, that means? Like, yeah, we know. Hey, listen. Yeah. Now, it's, it's Have a, you ever met Nas? No. Yeah, um, well, when, when I was, was younger, young. but like now, well, I'm like now as an adult, now. yeah. yeah. Now I'm not gonna. gonna I don't, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna count that. I actually remember meeting him that time for the documentary, but we didn't like. I was a little girl, like yeah. you know. Um, but I want to meet like not as a grown woman. Now I haven't met him. You know, you mentioned you know being depressed, and uh, you know I think that there's a lot of girls out there, a lot of guys, a lot of you know just people in this world, you know. And even speaking about big pun, you know, it, it's unfortunate in this culture and hip hop and, and just the way we move. Many of us don't talk to people, don't go to counselors, don't deal with mental health. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and there's so much out there, you know, you, a couple of things. But most importantly, you being a young parent mm-hmm. and growing up without a pops, mm-hmm. you know, is there things that you strive to do different for Ethan? You know, um, of course. I mean, he's the main motivation. I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, like I said, when I first had him, it wasn't like, OK, like I wasn't on my bullshit. And the, ne- the next day, not even the next month, not even the next year. It took me till he was like maybe like two and a half, yeah, almost three, three years old, for me to like get on my bullshit. When I like got my nine to five job, I did that, and I was just like, I had a, I had like a security job overnight. So I was like killer, like, like I was dead, like always tired, delirious. And then I was like, yo, I just I'm tired of this shit. Like I really hate this shit. Like right. I don't want to be a nine to five. Like that's not like I really felt like that wasn't me either. Like it, it really was getting me tight. So right. that's when I was like, that's when I thought of Starview, and then mm-hmm. I just started like just racking up spending all my checks on just glasses 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 and then i did the wicks and then my website i just like he was the motivation like Mm -hmm. literally because i'm like i don't want my son to go through the shit i went through yeah like you know being homeless you know struggling like working a nine to five like most most parents like oh i want my kids to work like i honestly i want my kid to work for himself yeah Yeah. i don't want him to work for the next nigga for you know for the white man or whatever like so you know i want him to (laughs) No. Not not like you, well, you know. No, what I mean? no, no, no. Listen, first of all, the other white man. Right? <laughs> you're Italian, so you're like. It's, it's, <laughs> don't pay attention to white. my sister. She, 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 she tries to play around like she knows I'm not that burr. No, I know. Yo, well, you know what I mean. Uh, no, but, no, we know. no, but if, if, fuck that Asian orange. Yo, did you ever get a chance to even try to tell Pun to go to a council? I mean, I know it's. I know he was a tough, tough. Oh, I know it was hard man. to tell He's him like anything. Me. We don't. That's we don't do those. That's not. That's not. When we when he was at the fat farm, they attempted that. That was part of the program yeah. to go weigh in every day and sit down, you know, in the circle with the other people yeah. and express your feelings. He looked at them like, Fuck yeah, but he was in here. West like, Bubble. Fuck, he wasn't gonna do it with those people. You got to do with yeah. anyone. Okay, he, what made him go he, to the fat farm? Was that like it was like health reasons or was he having like revelations where he wanted? Well, to... Well, the fat farm happened because it was a time that I left for the second time. Okay. I left. And when I left, he stopped production. He stopped everything. He had them, like, if you don't find my wife, I'm not going to record. So I had Joe and Steve Rifkin calling me, looking for me. And then they came up and said, hey, that they promised that, you know, he was going to be hospitalized if I come back and do you know, this whole platform. But the only way he would do it if I was to come back. So I risked my life coming back to make sure he was going to go to this fire farm. Selfless which, lady. Which which the fire farm was just all bullshit. Uh, like, fire farm was a clothing line by <laughs> Russell Simmons. That's the yeah, only fire farm he knew. He thought he was, was going to a was, runway was, show. Like, we, was at North, we was in North Carolina, uh, North Carolina, Riley. 
So it was a whole bunch of, you know, not our type of people around right. there. Right. And then they giving us this little bowl of, like, flavorless grain. I don't even know what the fuck it was. I was like, yo, you, I'm going to eat it with you, too. Yo, you're a true ride or die. I am. I you, was eating oh, yeah. that shit, too. And you, you know, you know, it's good. Let me tell you something. You know, there's success, and I think that it's every behind success, there's a good woman mm. that helps, you know, Pour, propel all that shit and you know even though you suffered through a lot mm-hmm. and you know I never put myself first yeah. I always put that man no. first and, and you know I mean you went through so many different things <laughs> yeah. you know but more importantly when he was touring right yeah. I don't even remember as many tours but I remember why he used to do tours sitting down he was mm-hmm. probably out at, at a heavy you mm-hmm. know I mean, were you guys, was he making enough money to, to move from that? Like, meaning to, to provide for you guys? I mean, yeah, there was, um, it was a slow progress at first, you know, because um, like you said, when he had the money with the lawsuit, you mm-hmm. know, he had it, but then he was bad with money. So, you know, he was. And really, were you was bad, bad with money, money too? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm learning now more, but yeah, I learned all bad habits through him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was young, and I learned everything with right. him. So, he, he was bad with money, but. Um, but it says like he spent it because he knew he would like in his mind like he spend it he's gonna get it right back type shit. But how much but was a show back then? He didn't, there was there was shows one time that he got a hundred thousand dollars for a show. Nice. So are you guys yeah. good now? Or like, what are you guys? I know. You... I mean, I'm comfortable. Yeah. We've been the right. I've been living I in mean, the same I'm... place for five years. Right. So that's kind of good. It's been that we ain't bouncing around. We want to move out and always. And I know you was gonna do a better. reality television show for a hot second with like. You and like a cool hurts wife and a couple yeah, of different wives, right? Been, I've been involved with here and there, but yeah. it's never panned out. And then I've always tried to do mines, but that never, whatever. But we'll see what in the future. Holds. I can see you definitely doing that. But do you have any advice for women dating guys in the industry now? It's like it's even harder. Forget about industry. What about women in domestic violence relationships? Yeah, but it's even worse because he had ego because he was of a certain status. But that's but that's yeah that's true. But that's a, a man a, a man's ego. Anyone can have an ego. It don't have to be an artist. Because I met men that I met people that have huge egos and they're not a, a rapper. Yeah, or nothing. they're just yeah. a construction worker. It's just, yeah, it could be <laughs> exactly just a person who's egotistic. Like look at Trump. He's not a rapper, but he's mad egotistic. That's a rapper. Yeah, he's emotional. He out here too. lying. He got ghostwriters. <laughs> he on a reality television show. His I, wife is foreign. Rapper, his, his, I would say, I would say to anyone who's whether it's woman or man, you right. know what I'm saying anyone who's trying to get a relationship, I advise that the first thing is the most important relationship that you gotta have on point is the one with yourself. Right, mm. you know what I'm saying, and once you're once you complete yourself and you're really happy, then I think it's a time for you to share that life with someone else. Because that's the problem with people. You got two un- two incomplete people right. looking for love and they're looking for each other to complete. So you got him looking at her and to complete me. And then when he fails or she fails because we're human and, you know, so then all shit goes to hell because this person did You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if you were to just love yourself, really get to know yourself, really get to know who you are and really feel complete yourself because no one could complete you but yourself. Right. And once you do that, then you could vibe up that person that's complete like you and then y'all could just share lifetime experience sure. like have good times sure you know you mentioned you mentioned uh, multiple times but you know like hip hop we love big pun right we, all across the world people love big pun mm-hmm. but then when you really think about it and I never knew that to the first time I sat with you but you know Pun wasn't the greatest of guys, you know, especially, you know, to you and mm-hmm. relationships. And, yeah, he wasn't. You know, and, and, and it's sad, but yeah, he wasn't. You know, and, and you think about it, like the, the, the domestic violence, the things you went through, but even like Star, seeing and hearing all the things that mom went through. You know, the the I know he st- he stabbed your finger one time and. But you know what? They understand. Like we understand, and we understand where he comes, where it comes from. He had a where lot, it stemmed he had, from. He had mental health. Yeah, he was a mental. He had mm-hmm. mental health. And he didn't get mm-hmm. help for and it. He never got the help. And he never and got closure. Over, he never he never got the help. This is a kid who was abused as a young child, growing up angry, hateful. You know what I'm saying? Going into this world where he had to fence for himself because he didn't have no one looking out for him, fencing for himself ever since he was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Now he's in this big world and, you know, he's bigger than life. And, right. you know, but, you know, while he was, you know, double platinum and everybody's loving him, he's sitting in the depressed hating himself. He yeah. hated himself. So when you hate yourself... How can you love someone else? How can you express how, that how did love? You know, how, how did you know he hated himself? I'm he, good he with psychology. I should have been a psychologist. No, but would he, would, would he tell you that he was well, depressed? Well, he tatted, I hate you across your back, across his back. So that would incline, and just the way he treated himself, like, 
psychologically. I've known this kid since he was 18. I know he didn't love himself. I know I yeah. I know I didn't have a lot of love for myself. I don't hate myself. I and I know I didn't have a lot of love for myself, but he definitely didn't love himself. Yeah, self-esteem issues. Yeah, self-esteem issues. Then you got to understand he was uh, when I met him, he was young and, you know, active and playing ball and running around. Now he can't even tie his shoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? He his physicalness, he can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Well, so now I'm doing a lot of stuff for him. So it's like a vicious cycle. It's like, you know, he he's not happy, you know, then, you know, he he's not happy about his weight. He's not happy about his childhood, his upbringing. So he eats, and then he became an emotional eater. That was his drug. So now he's getting more heavy. Now he's not happy about the weight. That's and one he's more eating thing more. That's and, happy about. Yeah. What was his uh, highest weight? He died at seven hundred. Then God. not happy with certain things with the business. Like he wants to expand. There were certain things with you know that he felt he was being held back. You know what I'm saying? So you know other other things. Finding out of how. He was getting played here and there, so he wasn't happy with. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do the foundation and try to do like. Even now crazy. with his legacy, are you content with where his legacy is? Do you feel like it's being um, upheld properly? No. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I think I'm, I'm the only one that is 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 really pushing on his legacy it or try to. I mean, and and I could have maybe done a better job, but I've did my best, right? But all that I've known and doing it on my own, but and 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 I always uh, thank the fans. The fans has helped me keep his legacy alive. Is if it wasn't for the fans, right? But what, what, no what's pun. to what's to expect? Obviously, you got a lot of big pun merch over at bigpunpl.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there is um there is a document. Uh, what we say? How do you say I'm that? Working, biopic. A bi- biopic. We're Maybe on, happening. We're, yeah, we're working. I'm Don't talking, let I, Lifetime do it. No, no, it's not. Go even, with BT. It's not. A, it's not. It's, I'm talking about a movie screen, like oh, a movie. Yes, who, who, even like better. Yes, yes, even who, better. Who would, who would even play him? Who could? Who could we even think even that know, would play him? I, I, I think you should get an unknown. I think I think I'm, I'm planning on doing be, a huge casting thing because they gotta cast me and him. So I'm doing like a huge casting thing, and we gotta get everybody involved. Or maybe his son should play him. No, I don't think because just because they just because my daughter or my son look like me, I don't think that they should play him. Well, they, your daughter and your son can't play both. No, but no, maybe but I, I think don't, I, if you, one of the know, other. I, it's like just because they look at him doesn't mean if he's not an actor. Like yeah. I want someone that's gonna. Yeah, act of course, of course. And I and I tell you one thing, you I do think. Uh, how do you say that again? Biopic. 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 Okay, my bad. I, you wanted a biopsy. You should want to take it. I'm the worst at pronouncing things, Liza. Um... But I think uh, people. I've seen people mention that and how much they would love that. That would be yeah, dope. That would be just dope. just just, just for the culture. Oh, just for yeah. the culture. What, what oh, other yeah. things uh, um, can you talk about I mean, that are I mean, coming for the like big I pun said, brand? We, 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 I'm, I'm getting more in the grind as far as branding him. We got the big pun sneaker that's coming on 2018. So okay, we're working on that. And I'm mm-hmm. excited for that. Mm-hmm. You know, the odd socks is still out there. There's another. You know, still more socks out there. Are, are we keeping the the brand on the hush of who we're doing uh, sneaker with? Yeah. Okay. Well, people, internet will see it. And uh, w- there is uh, some touring going on. You mentioned or some type of um... um the hologram. I'm like I'm trying to get something done with the hologram. I would love to. Uh, I would love at this. point That's to expensive. Do it. The hologram. It right? is, it, and, and, and me learning how the process is and how it's built is, is a little is a, is a little is a little. Yeah, it gets there. But I'm trying to see if we could do a a hologram capital punishment tour for 2018. That'd be it being that'll be the 20th anniversary that'd capital punishment. So I'm gonna put I think in the if call. you reach out to the sponsors, we could get some, no, yeah, some I'm, checks I'm for that. In, like, I'm going to put in the call tomorrow. Yeah. Like, hey, you guys are willing, whatever, and see if they could come up and, and set it up. You know, be a year and a half from now, but the sun is set up now, and I think that'll be awesome. You know what? Let's take a quick break uh, as we uh, unwind and finish up this episode. we got a couple more things to go over. Let's take a quick break. Light up your L's. Grab a drink. Grab yes. a lemonade, an iced tea, at? a grape lemonade. <laughs> grab some whatever. Yo, honestly, I grabbed some new Minute Maid blueberry lemonade. You fuck with that blueberry mm, lemonade? The Simply Lemon. Woo! I love the Simply Lemon. Internet, we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. You listen to the Premium P Show with Miss Listen Knows. Cheer. Yep, Charlamagne the God here. The Prime Minister of pissing people off, the ruler of rubbing you the wrong way, the architect of aggravation. And right now I'm with my guy, my man Premium Pete, and Miss Listenos on the Premium Pete Show, okay? Internet, tune the fuck in. Peace. Internet, and we're back. Sent with Liza and Star Rios. The one and only Liza. The one and only Star. Listen, you know, you have three kids. Three. You only had a baby shower for Star. How is that? Po- how is Latin was people possible only have I one? I didn't have like, a baby shower either. Yeah, really? Didn't have one. Well, why did you only have a baby shower for Star? You want to see? That's a good question. I don't. I may, maybe because they're coming back to back. I don't know. I don't know. It was the shower was something that my father actually gave me. Really? And then after that, it was like 
Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> gave a fuck. You know why I say that for? Because Latin people. I even are, have friends anyway like that. I have like girlfriends and friends. Like like, Yo, Latin people are known to throw some of the most. Uh, right, you know, like it's not even biggest like, baby uh, showers. It's like, like, like a extravaganza, <laughs> yeah. and miss- it starts at nine, and it's over at four a.m. Yeah, I, I missed that. <laughs> that shit is outside. That and that you drag- definitely should have had a second baby shower because. You had a boy after. No? I had no. no she I had, had a girl. two girls. Oh, I had girl, 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 and a boy. Oh, yeah. Then that's why. Because yeah. <laughs> you already had stuff for the first girl, so you don't need a second girl. <laughs> but you should have had a baby shower for. Her. Hey, listen. You know, it's yeah. a baby shower is good. But you know what? The only funny thing about it is, I think when you have a baby shower, I think you can only do it for one kid. Because then when you do it to another kid mm-hmm. and another kid's like you're asking people like no. bring more gifts, bring more gifts. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny. Like it's like a first kid. I think not some people just if you have a boy and a girl, you need a second baby shower. Yeah, but some people some people don't throw a, a second or third baby shower once they did one already because it becomes like um, you're no. asking too much yeah, no, no. I feel like it, no I feel like there's a time limit so if you have really? stair steps like if well, you have think, another one do a poll on this <clears throat> no yeah I think if you have a second kid if it's like two years later yeah you should have like stuff left but if it's like five years later you may new, need new so, things. So you're saying it's an expiration date. Or if you have a boy and then you have a girl, you're going to need so, a couple thought, of girl I thought things. you have a kid, each kid deserves a baby shower. That's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah, you but didn't think, do that. You I, all that. this right here, I never even heard of this shit before. Yeah, but you like, didn't, yeah you're right. You didn't do that. I you thought you that. have a, I mean, if I died, not have a baby shower, then have one. But I figured, you know, you have a kid, you have a baby shower. It shouldn't matter about hand-me-downs or... Oh, it's too much. Yeah, like, it's a new yeah, kid, a new baby shower. I guess you're right. Yeah, I mean. Will you feel gypped? That you mm-hmm. be like, oh, yeah. They oh, didn't celebrate yeah. you. Like, I have a baby shower because, you know, my sister prior had one and now I don't care. Now, let me ask you, when you one. did the baby shower for Star, was, how, how much was Pun involved? Was he a guy that would get involved with shit like that? No, it was. I don't think none of us involved. We just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was thrown for them. It was, yeah. yeah, it was at Mama's house. Oh. It was at my mother's house. So, you know, balloons and that. It wasn't yeah, crazy. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like Rice and bed. gandula. This Medora. was back in the 90s in my mom's house apartment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One bedroom now, apartment. Now, you went on tour with Pun wherever he went, right? Yeah. Now you all, but there was a point in time where he couldn't fly, couldn't fit in right. the in the airplane. Right. So he used to take a bus all over. The- yeah, we toured. We toured on the bus, a tour bus. So yeah. it was kind of interesting. How was that touring? Just not even with Pun, just in general. How was it touring? Like, what was those nights, you know? I mean, looking back at it now, it, it, I, I pretty could have, and looking back now, I can enjoy it. But it was it was interesting. It was like going from state to state, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a whole entourage of people, and, you know, you got to work it out in the bus. At the beginning, we had the bullshit bus, and as it went on, we had the bus. become more famous. Bus, you know what I'm saying? How did you, you know? deal with, like, the groupies and stuff? Like... Um, you just you deal with sort it. It like, like head on. Oh, well, she was right there. Shit. Yeah, I seen a lot of stuff. You had to like check a bitch. No, I, I no, I wouldn't. I, 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 there will be a lot of. Uh, he has security, and then I think because of me there, he would be kind of nervous. I remember one time I told him, "No, relax." You know what I'm saying? Because there was a whole bunch of girls on top of him want to take pictures, and he was like, kind of thinking like that tense. I was gonna trash the chick. And I'm like, "Nah, I'm, you know, you good." And I would just step to the side so it wouldn't be awkward for him. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I'm, I was that cool chick. Good writer. Like, you were, listen. I said it before. I say it again. You were. A ride or die chick ride that was, die, understanding, you know, cool even when he's gone, chick. still trying to fight for what's right and and yeah. and most importantly, just for you know everything that's big pun, you know. Because the thing is, a brand can't move, especially when someone's not here, without the right person behind it. Right, that's a fact. you know, and 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 you know, I think it's important. And now, yeah, now was definitely now in this in this time of game in my life, you know, I'm I'm. It's good. It's good where we at right now. So yeah, you know, what? What? How much did Pun love Cuban Link? Because you know, I mean, I feel like they were so close, man. <laughs> I used you know? to say that was his side bitch. Like that was his, that was a joke <laughs> between us. Like that was his. That was his, the person he had his affairs with. Like, but that, what do you think he, were, he loved about? They him? Like, they, they loved each other. Like they loved each other dearly. They known each other for quite some time, and they had an amazing bond and. And if we wasn't hanging out, if it wasn't me and my husband, it was me, my husband, and him, or it was just him and them right. together, you know. But it was a love, you know. They had a deep brotherly love. Like, you know, there's times that Cuban stayed with us and Pun was Slept Cuban, over? Like, yeah, slept Pizza over. parties? Yeah, what what did Pun like, to, what did Pun like <laughs> to eat on the ritual? Like, what did he huh? eat? What did he eat? What, what Pun? Yeah. Like, Everything. what was his favorite go-to? <laughs> jo- no, I know, I, I know you say that, <laughs> yeah. but... But what what was his favorite go to like I mean, snacks like, or he like he like if he it, regular yeah he ate a lot of bullshit if it was bullshit he ate all type bullshit white castles fast food shit all types of shit then if it was home cooked food he like you know the mac and cheese the Spanish shit yeah you know, rice and beans you know ate the beans he had to have like the three or four slices of bread with butter like it's then he like what did he like with Cheetos I think uh, he he liked something with Cheetos or oh no it was it, 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 it,
was uh, the tuna with the Doritos. Oh, the tuna. <laughs> they had the Doritos, the tuna sandwiches with the Doritos. Now, now let me ask you. Um, Cuban Link is still obviously involved. You talk to him still? Yeah, we talk. Yeah, yeah he's right. like an uncle to the family. It seems like no. I mean, you say you using your anointed imagination. That's I mean, not what's happening. She didn't smile. Nah, I mean, we nothing. don't see him like OD. Like Every, he was in my documentary that I just okay. Did. Yeah, but, um, there's a relationship, but people it's not the relationship that people probably would think that we're a close knit family. It's not like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have me and him. We have communication. It's always been, you know, the most out of I think out of all the kids who have the most communications with her. Right. Mm-hmm. But and that's when never she wants to hit somebody back up. You know, because she don't hit nobody back up. She hates doing. <laughs> How that, dare but, you? But it's not something that you know he's coming over Sunday yeah. nights and you know we're over there. But it's but not, you would say out of all puns, old crew. You Cuban know, you would say Cuban's probably, probably still the, the closest. yeah. What about you know what Tony saying? Sunshine? I speak, to, I speak to Tony Sunshine. You know, what I'm saying I got him on my phone. You know, yeah. on Instagram. You know, I'm cool with um Triple Safe's prospect. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't got an issue with anybody. You know, what I'm saying yeah. It's just you know, it's been years and everybody's lived out. You know, lived doing out their, their lives. lives. After Pun died, it wasn't like we remain a tight knit family. Yeah, yeah. So when the kids grow up with people, like sure, you know, they don't, time they don't is have spending no and moving. Let me ask him: Do you have any music that you could ever put out one day? Like, make an album? Um, I don't think there may be a verse or two, but. There's not no, there's Damn. no extra. Damn. See, you know, it's really, a, I, I, I mean, t- I got the list. There's no right. extra. See, you know, that's why you know it, it's hard. Unless somebody's it, no, but you know what it is too. Pun didn't. I know there's really nothing out there because Pun wasn't. He didn't record written, like that. Yeah, he wasn't sitting there writing rhymes. Like he would go and record and try to go home. Like you gotta understand, like he's carrying six seven hundred pounds of weight. Yeah. It's not comfortable for him to sit here for hours. Like it would be for right. us and be you know sitting in the booth like. You you gotta you're trapped in your body like you like going crazy you know what yeah. I'm saying? you could do but so much. Hey, listen, you know, I mean, you know, it's amazing when you think about like how big he got, you yeah. know, but how smooth he still was. Like yeah. even his delivery, like when he spit yeah, bars, very, yo, charisma. Yeah. I try to do his rhymes and I can jog and I'm like, yo, how did he do it? Like to have that rhyme pattern that fast to be that big. The delivery. And, and yep. The delivery. But and the end, you're saying actual things. And now you like bullshitting mm-hmm. around. What are you saying to the end? Towards what? the end is you saw when it was deteriorating. Because mm. towards the end, when you see it, people who've seen his shows towards the end of his career, it was nothing like towards the beginning. Yeah. I, I know in the middle, because he wasn't even standing or performing. He's now sitting, sitting down. down yeah. right. He wasn't even really saying the words. He was doing a lot of the ad-libs. So yeah. it, was, it was really sad to see. Yeah. yeah, I remember you saying that he was telling you that he knew he was dying. Yeah. You know? He couldn't. It was... Tell us about some of those last days with him, you know? I mean, the last, the last weekend, it was... <clears throat> the last weekend it was a peaceful weekend. You know what I'm saying? You knew it was a change. You know, he it felt like looking back on it, you could see that he felt like something was going to happen. Right. Yeah, you I remember you saying that he like called people out up to people. He flew down his sister and the kids, and he reached out to my mom to come up there that weekend. He was trying to reach out to everybody to come up and stay up in the hotels. And you know, it reminds me. It reminds me of like when Biggie uh, before he got shot. I don't know if you remember, but like he was calling all different people, apologizing, trying to put things together, work things out. I mean, yeah, it's just it was, that energy. Yeah, it was like yeah. So again, yeah. so you said he invited his sister. Yeah, he come, invited his sister, and it was that weekend just hanging on the hotel room, and you know. <coughs> Excuse me, and playing video games and stuff like that, and you know that's when the last thing that we have him in the pool that night. What games? Know, what the, games we playing? Was that I don't, uh, don't know what Tekken tech, and stuff like that. Tekken, like, okay. Yeah, then you know we went late night in the pool. That's when the kids was the last time. Oh, oh, that was with the kids and stuff. Was that skinny dipping? No, it was it was his, his sister, us all. In oh, the pool. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, then from there, that's when he flew his sister out that morning, and that afternoon he passed away. Damn. Yeah. So it was just it was a crazy weekend. Damn. Yeah, you know. What? Uh, well, again, again. What doesn't the world know about pun that they should know? Like, is there anything that's like missing or like you know like? I mean, people, a lot of people don't know about his like personal life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that, and that soon will be told. Like, you know, you know, a lot of people we speak about his career, his music, and there's a lot of documentaries out there that we focused on his musically. You know what I'm saying? But no one's really know who who was Christopher Rios, like, right? Who was really big pun? Like, what was his home life like? What was he really? What was really going on when he was double platinum and everybody was loving him? Like, what was going on in his everyday life? Right. And it's and it's and it's nothing like what you would think. Yeah. You know what I'm so that's that's the story that needs to be told. Like people need to see why he was the way we was, why we had the issues right. that we had, me and him as a married sure. couple. You know what I'm saying? You know, people need to understand 
where his anger and demons come from and, and his mental health. You know what I'm saying? So that's something what I want to, uh, in the future, you know, show and show people who he really was. And yeah. even you, Miss Liza, like, in hindsight, what would you do differently, if anything? Going back, I, there's nothing really I could do anything different because I loved him unconditionally. Yeah. You know Such what I'm saying? So lady. everything I did was through the power of, of, of my intentions of love for him. And I put him first in everything I did. And, and even still after his death, I put him first. Yeah. And still to the day, you know what I'm saying? So there's really nothing that I could have did different. And I mean, sometimes I think back, I'm stronger now. I could have been, you know, but... You know, I, I did as much as good as I could do with what I had were working with at the time. You know, there was a, a part um, where I remember you saying that uh, he didn't allow you to hang out with fr- like friends. He didn't allow you to watch TV shows. Mm-hmm. And then finally you watched uh, Oprah or I think whoever else was mm-hmm. on at that time. Mm-hmm. And you heard him talking about domestic violence. And it opened up a light for you. Or yeah, that you, was the first time I ever. But knew why what wouldn't it was. he let you watch TV shows? I guess because it was something where you got to keep he he to keep a control. You know, he had mm-hmm. no control in his life, mm-hmm. and the only thing that he had control that I allowed him to control was me. So I feel like it's to keep me in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Because if I was to find out or get a. a you know, idea of what life was really like. Or yeah, but how you were touring with him. You don't see what life is like. You're, you're, Not you're, really. You're Sorry. moving around town. You're in different no, states. No, so I don't see what life is like. I'm with him all day. I'm yeah. with him all day. I'm with the kids. We're on and off the I bus. So. It's a hotel. We're on the stage. He's performing. So, like, I don't know what street life is like. I don't right. have no interactions with no one else. I only know what the people he allows me to be around and what goes on there. So, that's not really knowing anything about life, about a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's what, what goes on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still... I'm still you isolated. Home all day. Yeah, I'm you home all day without, with the kids. She like, out. like she never left the house. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, with him, she was like a hermit. Studio, I'm like, third, so it's like. But make some stuff. Very isolated. Would you be able to do that in a relationship? Like oh, what no, she I'm went through. Opposite of her. Yeah, you would I be like, get no the bullshit. fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not jacking that. <laughs> not that I say bullshit now because I was then. That, Are I, you single, Miss Liza? No, even when I was younger. No, yeah, every yeah, she was a little different from the beginning, but every um. What I went through with my husband, I never went through that shit again and would never go through. So. Yeah, you got stronger. You know what? And before we even go into what you were saying, Ms. Liza, I definitely want you to X that. But, uh, you know, I, I really admire seeing you because you did, you were a ride or die and you did put him before anybody and you put everybody mm-hmm. and that affected a lot of you. You know, yeah. that hurt you. Yeah. But I like that also you got a chance to stick up for yourself a couple of times, but then you also got a chance to uh, focus on yourself and love yourself right. more. You know, you you said that before multiple times and I admire that you, you look back at that and now you, even at a later age, got a chance to love yourself. Right. Because you didn't for a while. No, I didn't for a long yeah. time. I just started recently. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and just for people for people who, who go through stuff like that, who may not love themselves, you know, yeah, it's what's, hard. Some, what's, some, what's some of the tools I that mean, you can give them? It's, you know, I, I've been through depression, and depression comes in all states and different levels. And, and you know, and sometimes it's really hard to look beyond what's what you see in front right. of you but you really got to know that 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 there's so much better you got to really just take the time and something you got to just quiet the noise in your head and just really know that you're worth loving yourself and when you start experiencing that self love that's like you, you, we're out there looking for love and we're looking for something and we not realize that we're looking for ourselves right. mm-hmm. and when you really find that self love and you start tuning into yourself and really loving yourself you know, it's a whole new world. So yeah, you know, um, start. We mentioned it before, but we didn't. We we, we jumped past it. When you t- spoke about being in depression, how did you? I know you said your kid. You know, uh, Ether had helped you really just you know see the light. But what really helped you get out of those holes of depression? Because we all go through, people go through different types of depressions. Mm-hmm. I speak it on all the time. There's sometimes I wake up, I don't even know why I'm depressed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but thank God I got some good family members and some friends that I could talk <laughs> to and tell them. And people don't look at me like, you crazy or just get over it. Or I'm not mm-hmm. manly enough. I don't, I, I have some good people that I could talk about this stuff with. Mm-hmm. And uh, for a while I didn't. And, you know, so I use, my kids really keep me going and really just knowing that, you know, they're, they're the fire and that keeps it burning and, and really just want to be there for them and stuff like that has made me jump out of that hole. What are some of the things that, you know, and tools, especially not only for you, but for people listening that go through depression, you know, what are some of the tools that you could tell them to, that help you out? Um, well, with me, it was just really, it's really all like a state of mind, really like, like, like to this day, like you said, this to this day, like I still wake up like, like 
like on the wrong side of the he bed. Yeah. Out of a completely <laughs> nah, no, nah, I'm saying like yeah. to this day I yeah. still have bad days. Yeah. Like there's still days I wake up on a like 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 feeling negative yeah. right. for no reason. Yeah. And the other days I wake up positive because it's all like the state of your mind. Nothing hap- nothing's changed in my life really. It's just the way I thought about thinking about the day. Mm-hmm. But um but really like honestly it was just the want. Like 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 I I can't explain it. It's just like I can't explain the the feeling of like really wanting something, like really wanting to do better, like wanting to do like that's really the only way to say it. like yeah. me wanting it more, like really made me like get on my bullshit, like right. really like change my mindset to be positive because like another thing too, like what I do is I always constantly think of all the bullshit that's happening around the world that's way worse than what I'm sure. going through. That's what helps me out. Like, I, I'm a person that, like, I don't really, like, I don't watch TV on that, but I, I like to, like, read about stuff that's happening around the world that, like, I didn't know. Like, you know, there's people, in the, you know, there's Suffering, people in another yeah. world country right now, like, they eat, no literally, food, yeah. they're literally eating cookies out of dirt. Like, they're making dirt cookies, and that's what they're eating. Right. So I think of shit like that, and then real quick, I just snap out of what the fuck I'm going through, because I really, like, I give myself reality checks. Like, that's what I do. I do shit mm. like that. Like... You know, even like, you know, a few weeks ago it was snowing. There's people in the city that's outside, homeless in, homeless in the cold, like shit like that. Like that what brings me, when I think of stuff like that, that's what brings me yeah. like a little, shit, you know, life that, 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 that not was, that bad. like life yeah. ain't bad. Cause you know, I have a home, I'm eating every day, I'm around my family and I make money every day. Like what I'm really mad about. And I'm really mad because I'm not where, where I want to be at, but like considering like I always I, I sometimes downgrade all the shit I've been through like right. sometimes I don't really sit back and really look at all the, yeah, yeah I don't really like your acknowledge like I yeah. really went through mash like growing up like before my pops died after my pops died like I went through so much bullshit like you know pain hurt struggles and you being the eldest and being the oldest yeah. like I like I you know I, I got it the hardest but that's like but I was it's okay cause like God made me to be like that like I'm I, like I was strong enough to carry the weight yep. like you yeah. know like and my, my siblings always looked up to me like always like so like I have all that pressure and even to this day like I'm not gonna front have bad days I'm always like sometimes I have an attitude cause I'm always thinking of what the fuck I gotta do I'm always like and I'm always like not shitting on myself, but I'm like my worst critique. You know, I, I, and and you right? should be because that's the person who's going to get you going. You know, you you're, 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 they always say you're your own, you're your, worst your worst critic. critic. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, it's yeah. funny because you know now you say that now I know sometimes where some of my depression stems from is because as people. Even at a, at a way to age, we're trying to get our shit in order. You know, keep in mind, people see you, again, they think, you know, big pun's daughter. Yeah, they see me like, or they see Miss Lissa. They think everything's, everything's they see peachy everything's keen. peachy and keen. Yo, I have a, a almost 17-year-old daughter and an almost two-year-old son. I'm trying to figure my own life out every day sometimes. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm responsible for these kids, too. Right. There's a lot of pressure. So that shit people, makes me yeah. mm-hmm. nervous and depressed. I mean, I, I'm focused. But what I'm saying is when you think about shit like that and like you're saying, and especially, you know what I realized, too? Being from New York, we spin so much. You know, when you start moving out of, uh, uh, you know, Jersey and start going down south, they're definitely getting their business and moving around. But what I'm saying is we're like, I got all over the it's place. More calmer. It's more you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and really what I learned to do is, is let God yes. take, you know, because, because to be honest with you, the things we worry about sometimes, we kind of laugh about later on. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Like we bug out. Like I never forget, man. Like when I got divorced, man, like I was calling everybody in my family. Everybody, I couldn't. I needed to talk to people. I used to have my cousin. I remember her husband was like, uh, "Honey, you gonna come to bed yet?" And I was like, "Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I took your airs hostage. You know, like you know, go ahead." And then I realized later on, I stopped calling her. And I said, and when I seen her, I says, "I didn't stop calling you because I didn't. I, you know, because um, you know, I, I just didn't want to. I, I didn't need to anymore." I guess what I'm saying is, you know, it's good to, you know, use your your family and your surroundings and your people to uplift you yeah. and really find something to really just generate that. Because, yeah. you know, as people, you know, everyday life is, it, it gets, it gets depressing. Yeah. But you, like you said too, you know, we, we it, people always have a worse, but anyway, um, mm-hmm. sun, let, let's go over the sunglasses again. It's called, <laughs> it's called, yeah, it's star view. Yes. And, um, and people <laughs> could check them out and, and, and order some on 
uh, on realstarview.com, which, okay. is, which is my name, Reels, my, it was R-I-O-S. Oh, so it's realstarview.com. Yeah. Okay, it's R-I-O-S. Like star Reels backwards, mm-hmm. realstarview.com. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, Check out them shades on there. So yeah. dope. <laughs> yep, yep. I, yo, I, there's so many flavors. I love the way it looks. You got like the the amber rose look. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you got. Yeah, the- I really try to. Um, I try to get a, like because me, I like to like I'm, my style is really different, eccentric. I don't like to really like mm-hmm. wear regular plain glasses, but I do have that option because a lot of people they don't like crazy shit. Right. They're like you know, I just want some simple aviators or something, but. I have like <laughs> I have a lot of crazy styles too for the for the funky people you know for the weirdos or the, yeah. you know those are the, the weirdos are the normal people in this world it's, now it's right and Trust back me. then that was I was the weirdo because I used to have like colored eyebrows and yeah. do crazy shit and people used to make fun of me and now that seems like what's in right it's just funny You've to been me on trend. <laughs> but, but also I would say in order in my mindset I'm thinking just from the years experience I'm saying if you're not weird you're not creative. Yeah. You know, like be weird in your own way. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and, and because people, if, if you're going to be like everybody else, then what, yeah. what are you? You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Like, we'll and then when out. you're different, people judge you. Right. But then when you do something yeah, yeah, different and it pops, like, yeah. they love you. Yeah. You understand? That rhymed, do you see? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Big Pun. <laughs> um, what else we do? Actually, you were saying something. Want, I think Miss Lissa wanted to know if Miss Liza Rios is single. Mm. Oh, I did. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> yes, Don't be I getting am. to her love life. Listen, nah, yeah, I'm you the one brought it back up. Uh, well, I didn't want to <laughs> let your uh, right because huh? I was going to ask her. Uh, I was going to ask them the um, top three rappers in order. Well, um, well, let's start. Let's start with who is Big Pun's rappers. I think oh, well, his was um, Dylan, 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 Dylan. No, it, Big Pun. It was who, I know Rock it was Kim. Ke- Rock him, yeah. Um, King, Big Daddy King, and um, um, Coogee Rap. Wow. I just seen the Coogee Rap and Kane show recently. Oh, that's right. That's right. I seen you take some pictures with yeah, them. Shout out to Kane, cool. man. That's Kane cool. is, for, uh, pun intended, but forever a smooth operator. No, he was he was killing it on the stage still. I yeah. was like... Yeah, pun that's loved. Dope. Pun looked up yeah. to them. Yeah. 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 yeah, then later on, he loved Nas. Like, that was his... Wow. He, he loved Black Thought. You know what I'm saying? So he had a, he had a few. Who else did he? Do you remember who else he? Uh... I mean, those are the ones that he named that that he that he really looked up to at the beginning. Then from everyone else, it was just you know competition. Just yeah, listening yeah. to right. Uh, yeah. Now, what about you? Me. All time. I don't know. I, I don't know when it comes to music, old right? time because like, I, I listen to so okay. Many what, music. what about you, Star? You say who? who, who now we talking about rap. Who are you listening to now? Um, right now I listen to like a lot of underground. Honestly, I hate mainstream. Um, okay, who? Yeah, um, I listen to, but it's not rappers. It saying. doesn't matter. Who do you listen to? I listen to some chick called Doja Cat. I don't okay. know, I've never heard of her. Um, mm-hmm. is uh, that like some some rock and roll shit? Like what EDM? Is it? Nah, she's like some. It's like stoner music. Okay, like, yeah. sing, like <laughs> <laughs> that's the new bar, mom. Uh, <laughs> not um. Oh man, um. I listen to Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna front. I really listen to from, other shit from like Bob Marley to like to Mini Ripperton. Like, yeah, to like trap music. I'm an old head. Um, I listen fact. to. I'm not gonna front. I listen to the trap music and shit. Uh, I used to despise it, but I finally embraced it. Um, but um, yeah, I listen to everything, yo. I really can't say my top three. I used to be like a Lupe Fiasco fanatic, a uh, Nas fanatic. Um, I used to call myself Star Wheels the cool like forever because of Lupe. Beyonce, had too. Beyonce yeah. is my idol. I love How her. How did you feel about <laughs> Beyonce giving the middle finger with Miss Tina? That that's that's my. I love that picture. You did? Yeah. yeah I love that y'all picture. loved it. <laughs> hey, listen. The, I can the, see y'all doing that. The Queen Bee got twins on the way, man. I can't wait to see that stroll they come out with, man. It's gonna have oh, like oh, it's gonna be like a hoverboard. Old. I can. I, yeah, it's I'm gonna be. Next level shit, yo. You know. Has to come up with a kids line. <laughs> How true is it that Pun, you know, when we spoke about touring before, I forgot to even ask you this, but I heard that Pun didn't like the tour. He liked to, wanted to just stay home with his family. I mean, yeah. I mean, the less, I mean, if he had his choice to stay home, he, he had his mindset one day he wanted to have a home that had everything in it, like Starbucks and everything. Yeah, that. He was, yeah I remember. So like, he wouldn't even <laughs> have to ever leave his crib. He's like, yeah, I'm going to build this. I'm Starbucks. Nigga want to live in the mall. Like, he don't ever want to ever leave his house. But Yo, you still speak to his sister? Um, that's... Two of them that I speak to, 
Yeah. One of the oldest one. I don't. We never really had much of a relationship. Christine, shout out to Christine, mm -hmm. and um, Penelope. You know, that's the older one from him and his father. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a little up and down, but we still speak. And then the younger sister from the father's side, me and her speak. Mm -hmm. Now you. Uh, last time I seen you, you were going to put a book out, and um, you've been still been. You got back to it. You're working on it. Yeah. Maybe come out. Maybe hopefully the end of this year. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's just been me writing it. So if I push it, yeah, I'm hoping. Well, I think honestly, to be honest with you, I think that a book would resonate not only with hip hop, not only with being Big Pun's wife, but more importantly, uh, again, I said you were a trooper. You know, you you you, you sacrificed your life. You've been through domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You know, you made it through. Like shout out to Barry Manilow. I don't really listen to him, but you made it through the rain. You know, <laughs> and, and <laughs> but but uh, nah, I think that's inspiring. I told you this before. I told you this before. Nah, it's inspiring <laughs> because you know what? Nah, definitely. Thank you, you. you. You were in. You were in turmoil and in love. And people, and you know what it was. So I was thinking about the other day about me and him. Is like, while we was going through our bullshit as a as a couple, um, I went through a lot, and I still had to be there for him a hundred percent. I was there loving, lonely, and then after he passed away, I was um, I, I still was still with him. I never had, I never put myself, yeah, I never put myself first. So, mm, mm. but now it's time. Well, hey, listen, put you've been putting first. yourself, internet, so listen, also make sure you spend some time with yourself. You know, I, n I remember times where... To my masturbation? No, mm. Well, that that too, but 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 honestly, I think people are afraid sometimes to be anymore. alone. Yo, honestly, doing it spending spending lately. time. No, no, I'm not talking about only masturbation. Sorry. Stop being, stop being a freak. You said love yourself. I've been loving a lot of myself. Internet, listen, slide up and miss listen those no. DMs. No, oh my god. Send them dick pics over there to her Please because uh, she sounds <laughs> At like. At least she, they don't listen to that part. Do not do that. Yeah, send them eggplants. I'm going to report you, no, and you're going to be sad. That's being a snitch. If someone sends you dick pic, you could just block them. Don't report them. I'm not. No, they're not invited to the block party. Don't. I'm <laughs> definitely going to just. Report. I'm a flag you more than a. Oh, you know what? You know we need to give credit to for, to for Liza too is because yo, uh, not only was she a ride or die, but somebody who really helped steer the career still to this day. But you know what? Also, when Pum was 700 pounds, I remember telling you, you had sex with him, and I was like, yo, how the Wait, fuck do you have <laughs> sex with 700 it. pounds? <laughs> And she was like, I ride that motherfucker. And I was like, oh, shit. That's what it is. Yo. He talking about not being a freak, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like Maury. He be hyping it. I'm low. Liza, let me ask you. How the hell do you have to send a low? Honestly, for the internet, I want to know, for all the big men out there, you have any advice? How did you have sex at 700 pounds? I mean, it, it, it was, it, it had to be creative, but it was me, <laughs> me, me doing the work. You know what I'm saying? But looking back, you know, I was just doing it because I was just doing my duties. Oh my but God. Yeah. Right. it wasn't, I don't think either of us was having that much of a great time. Yeah. You no, know I think saying? I was having and, a good time. And, you know, it was at one point, but now our host is, girl, you gotta. Was he really as good as he said at. La lengua. Let me tell you something. If we talk about our whole sexual kind of relationship, that's a whole nother show, Yo, and it's not even. Can save it for the show. It's not the even. Show, part it's two. not even. Um, it's not even like that. Oh, yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying, like you know, you gotta understand, like being with someone who's abusing you, it's hard to then yeah be to romantic around, and yeah. be like, oh yeah, the same hands are choking me. Now you want to, you know, what I'm saying, choke. Yeah. Like, now you want to choke. Oh, you know what I'm saying? so it's you just wanna like do that sexy choke after you done. Tina turned me So it kind of like dampers the romance of yeah. anything and our relationship as a loving married couple, yeah. like what, of, you know, being intimate. You know, the intimacy that you go through, not even, I'm talking about real intimacy, not even like sex, like real intimacy, like there's none of that there because the relationship became so volatile that there was no room for growth for us, you know what I'm saying, as a couple. It just, you know, I was there and he was just obsessed, you know, you know, wanted control and, you know, possessive, you know, and I was just dealing with a madman for years, just dealing with it and just trying to survive, read the kids. And then at the same time, him, you know, becoming a famous person yeah. under that umbrella. And you were like security sometimes. Yeah, yeah I was security. Like, yeah, I, yeah, like, I was the number one security. You used to carry around. the gun on you. All huh? the time, if I was there, that was the one that, I, if, if anybody was around, if I was there, I was the one that to look out for. Mm -hmm. Cause that was my main priority. Like, so where'd you right, stash in the jacket? I'm on the I'm right here in the back of my on you know I'm on top of you. And they the never search you back. when you would go places. I'm not search anywhere. No, no one searching me. Look at that man. See back in the day. And that's then what... back in there I had to stash in the car. So I had you know we had tools in the car. Like I used to sleep with the gun in my pillow, like under my pillow. 
Prodigy came on here and spoke about a time where he went to Big Pun's house and uh, he left his gun in the car. And Pun liked uh, a Prodigy, but he did say, like, yo, you know, he, he played with him. He's like, Wait, where's your gun? And he's like, oh, I'm not going to bring it in your house. And then he made everyone in the house pull out a gun. And he's like, see, right now we, we could take you out if we want. He said there was like 14, <laughs> 15 people that pulled out a gun on Prodigy and were like, yo, you know, don't slip up like that. Yeah. Yo, how many how many guns do you remember him having? He had, he had a gun in the pillow. I had a gun in the pillow. There was guns upstairs. We had shotguns. We had guns. How, how many in that fucking house? I don't know. We had the, we had the, uh, he had the nickel plated 45, then we had the snub nose, and then we had a 44. God then damn. Then we had a double shotgun. Shotgun, yeah. Yeah, and and he was into knives too before that, right? Yeah, he had a lot of knives, knives. With, fucking um, pun, like man. With, uh, yeah, from pun wasn't playing with those fucking weapons. Hey, listen. Yeah, but I love guns too, so it, it, it didn't make it easy. It was like I was, I grew up around guns. My father had right. guns, so it was something that was, it was yeah, both not was out the norm. It. So it probably made it worse that we both love guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So listen, internet. As we wind the episode down, I want to give you listen, Star Rios. Liza Rios, um, you know, I, I just, I, I, like I said before, I love your story, Liza, just in the fact of I think it's inspirational, even for people that could sit here and say, hey, you should have did things different or you were in a relationship that really wasn't that good. When you're in it, you don't even know how yeah, to move it's sometimes. it's all a learning lesson. That's why I say it. a lot of people can criticize and everything, but at the end of the day, we could all learn from each other. And, yeah. yeah, and I think that's yeah. what we're here for. And Star, too, you know, I, I love you. You know, I think you've got a great road ahead of you. I love your uh, entrepreneurial skills. And she about to drop that mixtape. Yeah, <laughs> so listen, where, where can they find you um, on uh, Instagram? Um, my Instagram is uh, star underscore reels, and my Facebook is star reels. Um, my Twitter is star reels the view. Um, oh my God, you're all, all don't be giving you a mehente. You want mehente? Nah, <laughs> that's okay. it. Just so like the main <laughs> social media, the main ones. Um, and what's the website again? My website is reelsstarview.com. And where you can get the merch internet is bigpunpl.com. Pl.com. And, and I'm on Instagram, p u n pun underscore is underscore her so pun it's her yeah pun mm-hmm. is her. and you got the merch going there and we got we yeah. got a book coming listen internet oh we got the it official pun morning. on instagram so follow that if you don't want to follow me that's good <laughs> follow uh, um you know official big pun on instagram that's why i put all the merch and his you know site is up on there and everything so yeah hey listen you know um Legends never die. No, they never, never die. And you know what? You know, like I said, we definitely, um, I think None just, of us do, actually. <laughs> well, true, true. No, but I think as a whole, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. You know, uh, hip-hop really appreciates um, Big Pun and, and, and really just like what he contributed. But at the end of the day, people don't understand there's, there's, there's lives and families. And that's why I wanted y'all to come to not only talk about that, but just talk about like, you know, what y'all went through. So and, mm-hmm. and I think that because because people just see Big Pun and think like ah you know it's yeah. a rapper it's, 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 yeah. but there's real lives it's there's real, real lives that are affected yeah. by it and move and, and 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 that and come up what's the documentary again what's the name of that uh, mine is uh, Star Reels the Firstborn and, documentary then, check out the video your highness and yeah you have to check out my first Yo, ever music video it's a freestyle um, it's uh, it's called your who directed highness. the documentary again um the um. Dante, Dante Luna. Luna and Joseph Rivers. Dante, yeah, yeah. Yes. And shout out, yeah, you know what? Shout out to my guy D Wells because he's the one who told me about uh, them doing a documentary. And he's yeah. like, "Hey, you should reach out to them." I was like, "I already yeah, know Liza." Yeah, they're really yeah. good people. They reached out to me. They're like, they're like, it's like to the point that they do all my projects. That I have like, we have like this bond, like a loyalty kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like everything I do, they have to be a part of. Like, yeah. and that's dope when someone sees your vision. You know? Exactly, and I fuck with them because they reached out to me and they believed in me so much that they just like they drive from Boston. Right, mm-hmm. they're not even from here. Mm-hmm. So for them to drive to Boston and they do shit out, like out of love. Yeah, so then you know they already believe. They in really it. believe in yeah. me, and they really be- and they and I'm and. And like They're we great, help yeah. each other, like and yeah. everything we did has been great, and we only been getting great feedback from the That's documentary dope. and the music video. So um, I just I just hope that we get that uh, biopic. Is it is not that, biopic? <laughs> it's not, you know biopic. Okay. You know what? You don't even gotta say a biopic. That's the word of the day. It's gonna be a movie. I hope we get a big pun movie. It's a movie. Fucking you know? biopic. <laughs> Little so brown you know hairs everywhere. It was mm-hmm. a movie. That's mm-hmm. right. A little brown hair. Little brown. <laughs> anyway, little blonde anyway, listen. <laughs> Internet. Make sure you subscribe, yeah, rate, her. leave a comment, tell a friend to tell a friend. Make sure you fuck with Liza Rios, Star Rios, everything they got going on. Thank so you guys. Dope. Thank you guys for stopping by. Yo, thank thanks you. for having me. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's family in the building. Definitely. And um, 
And congratulations on your show, man. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Like, most definitely. Listen, yeah, it's last funny. Time it was, last time I seen you, Lissa was outside. Yeah. yeah how how funny, I met Miss Liza. How, how funny is that? Do we, yeah, last time I was on crazy. the Comeback yeah, Jackson and show. I did like an yeah. after was, show that yeah. I like deboed. I was like, I'm interviewing all y'all guests yep. afterwards. Now what? It's like a year and a half later, a year yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, year and a half later. Now we, 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 we unified. And yeah. I'm killing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Listen, awesome. We you never together. know internet. You never know your journey. Just keep That's pushing. Right. That's, That's right. Keep That's pushing right. by. And listen, um, long live uh, Big Pun. Always. And um, I'm not a player. I'm not a player. <laughs> Fuck a lot. I'm not a player. But you're still a hater. <laughs> I'm not a hater. Internet, see you next episode. Subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yes. Cheer. Cheer. Peace.